Hey there, Silver Tongue Devil here, and in this live stream we are back at Hell Sweepers. I've had a little bit more time on this game now. I know a little bit more about all the things and the stuff. I have some very cool abilities to show off tonight. I have some very cool weaponry to show off tonight. I even have some strategies if you're just getting into this game and you want the most overpowered shit to play with straight away. We'll go through some of the little changes that have been made first. Now I've almost unlocked everything. You are able to actually now assign yourself a loadout. So for instance, I have promised tonight that I want to show off the bow. I want to show off the staff tonight. Tempests are the ridiculously overpowered weapon, just in case anybody didn't realize it yet. We are going to put our... We'll put some lightning magic on the inside. We will put some blood magic on... No. Let's put blood magic on the inside. We'll put lightning magic above. We now have the bow and we have a shoulder and a hip slot, which are actually really good. Where is... Mm, can't do that, can't do that. Right, we will keep that at none for now. You know what? Let's put that there, that on the down, so that I can equip it on the fly. Eh. Don't usually have too big weapons, but I do want to show the staff off because Von will like this. Mm, what else? Let me put on my hip slot. If I pop... Yeah, well, yeah, things and stuff. Um, got that, 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 got that. Hello, stick. Right, here's one of the things that I really like about blood magic. I've said before and I'll say it again, blood magic is ridiculously overpowered, fantastic in its elements and really good looking. It also has a perk called the Devil's Trigger. Fittingly named, I thought. This basically allows me to not have to rely on picking up blood gems or crushing enemies' limbs to generate blood magic. I can just do it straight away. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so, a couple of things that have changed out about the game. You can play the game with a full empty loadout. That is what we'll do on the next run if I get chance. For now, we're going to go with my loadout so that I can show you the things that I want to show you. Um, I'm going to spend some souls just so I can get more loot, better stats and better rewards out of this. I would highly recommend spending this because it basically means that you can get more cash and more souls. You can make this back after a few levels as long as you are performing stylishly. Let me show you. Um, I'll just play it in Veteran for now. I'm at the moment playing it on Extreme and I'm ready to move up to Masochistic. The game has been made harder in some regards and then easier in others. But for now, we'll just play it in Veteran. We get a 40% multiplier. If you go for a truly random loadout, you actually get an increase in XP as well, which is the way to play this. Another tip that I would give you is do that when you haven't got Good much luck. unlocked because then you know what you'll be getting because there's only a very small pool. Let's us sweep some hell, shall we chat? This is once again becoming one of my favorite games to play all over again. I really do love Another this game. Another cycle escape born from the minds of men. The ingenuity so what is it? It's another roguelike. But, but, insanely cool. So at the very beginning of the game, we get to pick a blessing. And because I've got for various powers, I get this as an extra. So straight off the bat, we get a plus 15% increased damage. Now, if anybody likes Devil May Cry, this is the Devil May Cry of VR. I'm mainly doing magic and gunplay at the moment. I have not even touched or barely touched the hand-to-hand -hand in this. And the hand-to-hand -hand and weaponry is pretty good. 
This is something that I just unlocked, Flat Earth. Reduce damage taken by 30% on the ground, but increase of 30% when airborne. I'm not doing this. Increase damage 20 seconds. Anything that is increased damage, I don't really want, if I'm honest with you. One, for those of you who are noticing here, I have a couple of perks already pre-selected. They are Gilded Boots and something gravity forgotten gravity basically means i can do more jumps which means i can do most more flips which means that the floor is lava and i never have to touch it stakes are high we'll go for this anyway because it won't let me pass the screen until then what do you think hey eh, buggy let's go that was my helper i threw him away so First things first, we'll have a look at Tempest, because Tempests are a very good way to get a run going in this game. I'll play around with the bow extensively tonight, because I haven't really played around with it a lot, and it is very cool. So, normally, you go into a mission, you have to do the thing, and you're done. First tip that I will give you, as I've said previously, destroy every single one of these totems that you can see. The yellow ones not so much because they can't change into anything, but the blue ones destroy them because they can actually turn into enemy things. Things that will damage you whilst you're flying around in combat. If you're playing this game and you find it too hard and you're being killed for no fucking good reason, it's because... More enemies. These things have an, an area of effect that does a lot of damage, and there's other ones that fire stuff at you. Now, maneuverability-wise, we're pretty maneuverable. What I want to do is I want to gather, I want to make sure I'm on maximum ammunition, and I want to gather all of these guys up so that we can let them have the good news and get a big combo going. Gentlemen, shall we begin? I've recently put on the kick function within this game as well. Which allows me to basically do flying kicks now. Like, like I didn't need enough weaponry, I've now got more. And that can be in the form of a drop kick, or a right kick, or a left kick. I can even bicycle through the air if I so desire. Da -da 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 Seen this move before? I'm pretty sure you have. So, the whole point, whilst I'm pissing around though, I am losing out on combo points. The whole point is to keep your combo going. The way to keep your combo going is to kill. So, that's obviously ended with a finishing shot and a kill. That's a kill. That's a kill. Oh, that's a kill, man. And just by landing, recharges. Recharges your jumps. So at the moment, fuck off. At the moment, we've got the ability to jump up to one, two, three times. After that, we can't jump anymore. Once you touch the ground or wall run, you can then continue to do more jumps. So I could do one, two, three. Oh, that didn't work. Two. Ball run, not so great in this, but it does work. This is obviously not a very flat surface to do it on. Make sure the the one thing that has changed with the game now is you. for those of you who have played this and are looking for a reason to play it, the quality of life improvements that they've made in this game are very much well worth it. Those yellow shrines always drop a key of some magnitude. You get given those keys automatically now, less faffing, basically. And we also get a reward at the end. We need keys for chests. That will all become apparent later. So herein lies the core mechanic of the game. At the end of each level, we get to pick something. Sometimes it'll be things that we already have equipped. Sometimes it'll be new things. That allows you to then power them up and also level them up as well. This game, even at full price, now has a level of content that needs to be seen to be believed. You are doing, in essence, the same thing over and over again, but it gets cooler and bigger and harder. 
and there's constantly things, there's bars. Always bars. You can always be advancing bars and making things more powerful. Till you get to the point where you are nigh on unstoppable. The further you get through the meta progress of the game, i.e. collecting souls to unlock things, the quicker you become unstoppable. And I don't buy you, but I love becoming unstoppable in games. So we'll we've already got vault magic and we've got the ability. We've got the ability to fire it normally and that creates like a black hole we can throw the vault, vault ball and that can get can do a lot more things later on or we can combine them and allow us to fly with an electric field or we can emperor it and give them the good news so and this is all again gesture based i have my lightning to up so I hold grip and up, and then I have a lightning ball. But then on top of these things, I can infuse weapons with various elements. And the level of complexity for this, it, 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 it's almost unlimited as to what you can do and how you can do it. And the thing that I like is all the little bits and pieces that you can do affect and change things visually. So everything just starts looking even better again and it may look complicated but all of these things are given to you on quite a slow basis anyway for now we're going to increase our vault magic and we can do things like increase its damage change some of its properties and also usually i go for reduce but for now we will make spell balls bounce so now instead of just throwing this and it hitting the ground it bounces and it creates sparks every time and you can get multiple of those so there you go now we've got that i'll wait until we've got some level ups before i really start showing off some of the more nastier things so make sure you've destroyed all of the totems because you also collect cash and souls from that and then you just go on to the next level always be on the lookout for chests as well but there aren't any on this level so we'll just carry on the reward you pick determines what kind of stage you go on to next so do be aware of that because at the higher difficulties it almost becomes like onward you need to start thinking about levels that you can do as opposed to the specific rewards that you want to take now one of the things i have found with the tempests in comparison to the pistols i think these make the pistols completely irrelevant they're actually easier to reload than the pistols off of the bat the pistols though have the ability to get specifically spawn bullets and later on you can make it so that you can put the gun to a place on your body and it reloads automatically which then makes the reloading even more easy and convenient reloading with this one though is literally done by just slamming the magazine out and then you're magically given another one or if you fire the gun empty whilst you are you whilst you are levitating it it'll automatically re re reload for you you can have up to three of those in each hand being controlled it's very cool stuff very cool stuff right so the other thing that i will note as well the mission so just eight enemies left so let's let's uh let's try a little bit of bow shall we another trench of demons so again you want to let them gather up now it is harder with the base level of stuff to do well with the bow but we'll, we'll give it a try and also double shot as well now one of the problems that you have with the bow is that it kills things particularly quickly but as long as you are going for specific shots like headshots and uh, you also get Oh, that's good. You also get specific kinds of shots. And we can also scorpion it. <laughs> and the problem with it is because we're killing things too fast, it isn't giving things a chance to respawn. Which can be a little bit of a problem when you're trying to keep the combo going. So 
At the moment, the problem we have is the bow is very, very powerful for, the books. for what we're doing. But, hopefully, you can see how it's very, very cool. Oh, and you remember how I said about infusing? Well, yeah, we can change this into a lightning bow so that it then fires multiple shots. We can infuse it with blood. I think this gives it life draining qualities. Oh, and bouncing. Because I haven't got bouncing yet. Yeah. And yeah, it'll really hoover through your manner, all of these little plays and all these little pieces. The more you do and the more you put on the better the effects, but the more mana it drains. Hey, this is quite good. I can actually point to the mana bar when I say that. You do have all of your mana and your life on your watch, so I don't need this. This is more for your benefit. The yellow is shields, and one of the perks that I would highly recommend if you're going to pick, and you get it quite early, is gilded boots. We now have an amount of shield based on the amount of currency that we have, and you can play this game without buying a single fucking thing, which means you can have all the currency in the world, and shields make you, again, nigh on unstoppable. They, they haven't, like, you know, nerf them or anything. One of the problems that we have, because we're not doing very well on combo, is this style kill bonus. We need that now, because of how the game works, in the 40 to 50,000 to yield the maximum amount of rewards per level. This is part of the reason why Vault Magic is very, very good. Let me show you why. Note here, next objective is in question marks. One of the things that they have changed now is you seem to get the treasure vault more regularly. Previously, you'd be lucky to get it in one run. Now you'll get it several times per run. And vaults are the thing that allows you to become very, very powerful very, very quickly. We will go for longer infusions. What the infusions allow you to do is that you can cast one kind of spell, absorb it into your hand, to then use another one, which then changes its effects. And but that was a very powerful spell that I just cast. The other thing with infusing magic to a hand as well is the weapon that you then hold then gets infused with the magic. And again, as simply done as just by casting the spell and then pressing the associated thumbstick in, your hand is then empowered with the thing. One of the things that I like about blood magic is the ability to do this. These things are amazing. I can't remember what they're called, but they're amazing. Oh, is it unknown entity or something along those lines? And... These just basically go across the level, destroying everything on your behalf. And you can just cast them within reason on the mana side of things and just send multiple of them off doing your bidding. Again, blood magic turns the game into easy mode. Most things do. But then the other thing that we now have is we have the ability to combine blood magic with lightning magic and create a whole different kind of nasty which will be shown off later because there's some that i haven't seen yet either so and they'll just go off and happily kill everything on the level for you right we want to make sure we've killed all of these maneuverability wise as well as you expect in a game like this you are highly highly maneuverable um you do to be able to kick in this game you do have to put the the change the actual button to kick which i have actually now done and it's actually really good because if you kick an enemy you can send them away and you can also push yourself away from the enemy with those kicks as well and create some space as well as being able to carry on those combos and get those style points for free. Although we are a little bit cross-legged there. But yeah, I do like the ability to just, yeah, just raise both legs. It's like, <laughs> I'm sure I've seen memes of that where it's like, how am I standing then? And how come I haven't just hit the floor? But anyway, but because magic, because magic, the the silver keys the silver keys are so what i was reading is the silver keys 
enhance or, or various keys added into the locks enhance the odds and kinds of rewards so silvers plus gold keys is good obviously you want always to put gold keys in jade keys are considered gold keys but you want to save them for chests with three locks because it basically is the the, the most that you can get event horizon will change the properties of our spell which will do so, and we will also have a five-finger discount. Reducing the mana cost of spells is one to go for. As you start collecting these different things as well, they'll start combining to these rarer powers, and the level of depth within this game is just fucking ridiculous. So, like, for instance there, now we can reduce the casting cost of our AOE spells, which they have actually sorted out, which now means that I can unlimited power it for much much longer not as much as I'd like to just yet but you know small beginnings we're getting there so let's one of the other abilities with blood magic as well is later on as you we used to have to use these things and crush them to create blood magic but I've transcended beyond that now we don't need these. These are one of the things that made that kind of stifled blood magic, and now it makes it ridiculously powerful because I don't need to pick these up, or I don't need to crush body parts to get them or splatter them to then channel that. I can just make them now, which. And we've got freaking laser beams as well. But again, high level spells. High level spells in this that kill things quickly, not as useful as you might think. You want to fuck everything slowly in this game so that you can increase your style. So, yeah, we're going to need pie for this one, Vaughn. I do like playing this one. And it's uh, the one thing that I will say is once you've got the controls down, you can be made to feel incredibly skillful and powerful within this game whether you are or you aren't i might add as well so a little quick number on the staff there are some abilities that i want but as far as the staff is concerned banging it into the ground releases a shockwave there's more that you can do with that first now i know what you're thinking like you know that's pretty pretty lame isn't it but let's say we add some magic onto that and then all of a sudden we're able to fire the different spell effects. If we double up on that, we now have two of the more powerful spells. So we've got the standard one that we just had, but we've now got the ability to cast Lemp uh, Emperor Lightning from this. And you'll also notice as well that my mana's going down a lot slower. And you'll also notice as well, as I've said previously, that anything that you can do standing, well, you can do it upside down. So you can be jumping over the enemy whilst giving them the good stuff of the Emperor Lightning. And this is all within combo. And wait, though, I know what you're thinking. Why have one magic staff when you could have two magic staffs and then just do exactly the same thing over and over again? And this is where it starts to then become overpowered, where you have two lots of lightning upside down. And again, it doesn't drain mana much, and this really ups your style game. So yeah, and then we can combine the different magic that goes into here so that we then start getting new magics made. But wait, there's always more. So this was the spell that I was casting from my hand earlier, which I basically just move through enemies and it'll just fucking obliterate them. Note how it's barely touching my mana because we're channeling through a magic staff and the staff can get much, much worse. One of my favorite abilities, which I hope we get, is the ability to bang your staff on the floor. And not only does it create these shockwaves that do various things based on the magic that you have, but it can randomly activate different magics within your staff, which then means that a slam can change whatever you are doing. And I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any uh, quiet or particularly weak magic in this game. So yeah, we'll be playing around with that in a little bit as well, when I've powered it up a little. Anyway, so we've got the chests. I've shown off a little bit more of what weaponry and various bits and pieces we have. Now let's start playing the game, shall we? 
so yeah, it's just ability on top of ability, on top of thing, on top of stuff. You know, if there's, like, I've got the ability to, like, you know, I've got the ability to levitate rocks. Kind of standard. But then I can put them onto my fist and make Hulk fists, which, I, you know, then, then I could maybe use some lightning magic and, and smush that. Oh no, I can't use that. Might not have the smush ability yet. Or they are in oh oh oh, 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 yeah, I forgot. There's a lightning fist, and then that gives you various abilities as well. Find the trove altar and assemble the puzzle pieces before the time Ooh, runs trove. out to unlock the reward. Done. So, a lot of the thing, one of the big things that I like, I'll explain what I'm doing in a minute, but I'm time, being timed. One of the things that I really like about this game is expression-wise, if there's a way that you want to play the game, or there's things that you want to do within it, based around the weapon sets that are going within the game, there is usually a fucking way, let me tell you. So, what that was, was Trove. Basically, you destroy these to get these D20-looking things. You want to get the correct colour for the correct thing so that you then get the maximum or amount of rewards if you mismatch the these with the wrong colors you won't get anywhere near as much money souls and bits now let's get some more stuff onto the tempest note as well you'll get a higher level so normally when you pick up items they are plus one but with higher level chests and completing missions in a higher level, you'll start getting plus twos, which means that you get to add more traits and you can get up to plus threes. And you can make all of these things so, so powerful. Hello, Ninja, how are we doing? So I like making my Tempests into basically handheld LMGs. So I want to increase magazine size and then increase magazine size. In equipping two of those, you only have so many slots for weapons. Thankfully, a lot of the weaker weapons have more slots to make up for it. But you've also got the ability to forge things out of the things that you're getting to do the same effect or better, but save on space. So this one, that one, one increases it by 15 that one increases it by 15 so that's 30 overall but we can forge those for 25 percent but only take up one space yes please and now you'll see that we've gone from 25 shots to a 30 shot clip, which just means that i have to reload less and that means more killing let's get all of these bits and pieces chris did you say that this one was like 20 uh, like 50 percent off recently or or something I did have a look and it wasn't on sale at the moment, or not that I could see. But yeah, anything less than full price on this game is very much worth it. The only thing, the only thing that I don't like, and they are improving, but it's still a little bit bad, is the backgrounds on the game. The enemy models look great. The models that you're carrying and the magic that you do in this looks fantastic, and that's great. But it's little things like, you know, well, this is supposed to be blood, but it just looks like a bit of shitty red carpet and a lot of the backgrounds are pixelated but when you're upside down you know and you you're firing various shit at everything you can't really see a lot of what goes on in the background anyway because this game is so action-packed it's only when things calm down and you're actually looking around and paying attention that you see just quite how bad some of these textures have they have actually been improved as well which is uh, saying something but hey Mobile gaming. This is one of the things. This is one of the things. There we... Oh, yeah, I saw you were playing Tarkov earlier. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a harsh mistress. Especially in the beginning times. My advice? Go out with just a bag. Doesn't cost you much. See what you can do. 
you'll learn quickly or you'll die fast. So we put in three gold keys, which means that we've actually got plus three level reward stuff and huge amounts of cash. All of this will make us more powerful more quickly. Managing your keys is actually more difficult than you would think in this game because you get to the point, very much like Dungeons of Eternity, where if you haven't got enough keys, you can't open all the chests, and we don't like that. If you can, you want to visit shops and buy jade keys as often as you can. Hello, Melissa. The other problem that we also have, though, as well, is that we have a perk which basically means the more money we have, the more shields we have. So we have to kind of temper the two. I can tell you now in this mode, I'm not going to need much more than about 100, maybe 200 shields, and I'll be nigh on invincible and impervious to pretty much everything anyway. So let's level up our blood magic a little bit. If we... Yeah, no, it is full price. I suppose in that case, then what I'll say is this is well worth picking up when it is on sale. It's very good anyway. And uh, on top of all of this as well, if you like doing all of this stuff, you can do it with a friend upside down all day. It's really good. So we will... The Bloodlands I'm not a fan of. That's the... That's the Bloodlands. Increasing XP is more for the meta progression, but I think I have most of my spells done. I don't really want to increase damage of these things, and spell balls I don't throw. So this is a bit of a, a rubbish decision for us. What we want... I mean... Oh, hey, hey Mel. I can't remember if I said hey Mel. Hey Mel. So, vampirism, this is a little bit more like it. Attacks that we do with blood magic get us our life back. I'm not going to be losing much life, but we'll take that anyway. The one that I want is Rad Valentine. This increases the number of bloody ghosts that we get, which is a bit of irrelevant. But these combined to be given uh, allow... Allow... That was low on magic allow that guy to stay out even longer. Unholy is linked to blood magic as well. What we want to do is we want to get paid for violence. 40% more loot when dismembering enemies. Guess what they do? That's right, dismember fucking everything. So we want as many of those as possible. Bloody conversion was a good trait until I got the devil's one or whatever it was convert limbs into blood balls when charged instead of ripping them apart you basically can then fuel your blood magic by you know taking bits and bobs of enemies and using them but we don't need to do that anymore increase damage of exploding bodies don't really want that increase the effects of consuming yeah we can eat those crystals as well if you want to be the full if you want to go full vampire let's get the explosive one and Corpse explosions, no, not really, but I'll take it anyway. So things, everything's going to start blowing up now. So, yeah. It all starts to get absolutely mental within the game. Yes. I, I have had a look at all of these things. Hello, Banksy. So, levitate an additional object. Uh, is it that one? Yes. So... Well, we do like a bit of blood magic. I don't... I mean, maybe it's real. I, 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 I don't think it is, but, you know, I, I mean, I don't think magic's real. But, hey, each to their own. So, but in this game, it's real. So, as far as... Oh, the texture thing that Chris was saying about. So I have tried it. The only problem that I have with it is I turn off my quest when I'm finished doing anything. And the way that that is, you have to plug it in and you have to set all of these things up and off every time you reset the headset. The problem with that is obviously it's more faffing around and it's more... It's more of that stuff that I hate to do. I, I would just want to put the headset on and play the game. And so if that means foregoing having to have better graphics and not seeing them so I don't know what I'm missing out on, fair dues. If there was an app that I could do within the headset, I mean, I don't know if it's advanced to that 
level yet or not. If there was an app within the headset where I could just go on to it every time before I start playing games and go on, 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 I'd do it. But as I understand it, you need to connect your headset up to a computer every time and turn it on every time you turn the headset back on, off and on again. Uh, I know Camille, one of IDU's finest, used to swear by that application. He used to leave his Quest headset on all the time. It's probably like a, a molten piece of plastic smouldering a, 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 a hole in his house right now. You can't leave these things on all the time. Yeah, no worries, Mal. So again, note how... Notice how I'm destroying all of these blue ones. I'm making a specific point to do so. Or else what have we got? We've got seven enemies to kill. Those ones don't matter because they won't convert. These ones. These are the things that will get you killed. These ones just continually fire projectiles at you. And unless you deal with them, that can really hurt. Uh, we'll get the enemies in a minute. Let's just destroy everything first. I want to show you the other one as well. There is another kind, but it's not looking like we're going to be able to see it. So, what's that, guys? Use the blood magic? Okay. You want to try and fire off as many of these as possible. These are also really good for your comboing. And you'll see this dismemberment and that they're dropping coin and souls now and just doing work for me. Now, that didn't get me a lot of style because these missions don't really because you haven't got much to work with. You haven't got much in the ways of enemies. But they do all the work. They do all the work for me. Yeah, if it's if it's one that is Yeah, if it's one that you can like turn it all on in the headset, that's fine. But I stayed away from it because it never was, so Right. Laser sights, then you guys can see what I'm shooting at. And this one, Phantom Thief, is quite good. It'll cost me less mana. This is the more powered version of Five Finger Discount. It'll cost me less mana to summon them, which is all good. No, 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 it's, cool. it's all good, dude. I don't mind talking about anything whilst I'm doing this. I'm having fun. You guys keep yourselves entertained. So <laughs> we'll definitely reduce the mana cost. And I think we... Mm. Oh, I forgot you can hold that down. Interesting. Bad static. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing is, the thing is, if I can up the quality of the graphics that I'm bringing you guys when I show off a game, then fair enough. But at the cost of potentially burning out my headset or just additional messing around, I've had to do quite a lot of additional messing around to sort out the audio thing, which, when we finish the stream, if everyone's kick if anyone's kicking about and we want to do a quick test run of Onward, that would be most appreciated, but that'll be obviously a bit later on tonight. Um, but I wouldn't mind playing a run-through with you guys once we finish this to um, make sure that I've got the settings right for Saturday, because I've got a giveaway for Dragon Fist VR Kung Fu! That's going to be fucking exhausting. I wonder if I can keep my 3v1 record going. We shall see. Ooh, power-ups for the staff. I told you to take the wizard staff. So these orange ones are ones that are either rare... Uh, sorry, they are rare, and they are ones that you can sometimes get offered that are actually combinations of others. Increase damage of enemy objects by 40%, but reduce durability by one. We don't want to be increasing our damage. I'll take this for now. You can always overlap these abilities as you play. Don't want that either. Magic staffs. What can we do with this? Phantom Limb, when holding the weapon, a nearby weapon of the same type will be levitated at zero cost, which then basically means that I can have multiple staffs in the one hand, which is quite good. Casting a magic spell will toggle to the next element. 
not so great in my opinion, but some of these we're going to have to start taking so I can find out what the other ones are, because sometimes it is the level of a weapon that unlocks the uh, different things, other times it is the experimenting with different combinations to find what can be made. So we'll take extra experience because there's nothing better. This is just for summoning the staff, not the actual spells. Taking multiple of these will allow us to reduce the cost of spells. So we will I need a level or a kind of level where I can really go to town on the style point so I can show you guys what you can get up to, what you can achieve on the style side of things. So that was a good example of wall run. Jump, jump. Jump, wall run, jump, jump, jump. And as long as you can get to a, touch a wall, you can basically jump indefinitely. So you never have to touch the floor, which all helps with the whole style point side of things because if you're jumping, you can be flipping. And if you can be flipping, you can be getting four times the number of multiplier than you would get for doing something standard. If you shoot something normally, you'll get a one times for each hit. Shoot it upside down, you'll get a times four for each hit. This can make your style multiplier is ridiculous hmm. all of these only ever give plus one which is a bit rubbish let's see if we can up the staff there's a particularly good one that i want to show here we are dragon tune casting ground or is it this one casting groundbreaker spells will infuse the magic staff with a random element well let's give it a look shall we this one is also really good magic spells will use the stats and traits from their respective skills so what I believe this means is if you've got really high level lightning and you've changed some of the properties of it that would then affect the lightning that this would work so yeah let's have a what was that Chris I don't know, it's nice to to upgrade the games. <laughs> My, after you said that, that four quest two, it just sounded like you just told me, you just said fuck you too. <laughs> or at least the lady told me fuck you too, which is fucking great. But yeah, fuck you too as well, Chris. So <laughs> we now have the ability to slam to then put magic onto our staff which then means we don't even have to infuse it anymore or we can infuse it with choice so now we have a tail of fire and ice which allows us to have a flamethrower on the end of our staff or we can change that to krillin style fucking uh destructo discs or the standard ice magic and then back to flamethrower again. But if we then slam the staff another time, we'll get other elements. I don't think you can get blood magic this way. You can just get the three core elements of lightning, fire, and vault. But now we have this, and this, and now we have this, which we can just send off to destroy anything that wants to get in our way within a radius. And then again, as I said, we can do all of this upside down in slow motion also. Which is very cool. So yeah, that is that is a very cool... So this if, with that one ability, you then don't need to equip any magic to yourself to be able to effectively use your staff. And in the standard mode where you get to pick your loadout, so you'd literally just need that staff and you can, I believe... No, you'd have to fuse that one to get it. You definitely... Uh, yeah, but why have one staff on? Why have one staff when you can have two staffs? And also, when you slam it on the floor, it does a, a, the area effect of one of the two magics also. So, let's see what we've got here. Hypno discs and... Can I keep that on as well? I think I can. No. So unlike... So they are... In some circumstances, they are slightly weaker versions of the variants of things that you have going. But again, can all be changed and done upside down if you want to. One of the ones that I really like, because this is actually quite difficult to cast, is that one. 
and that's just a turret now, which will electrocute everything within about a 40 foot radius. It, these are awesome, and you can cast multiple of them. And they don't, they cast a fraction of the mana. Normally, you would do these by infusing lightning into yourself, and then... Oh, I haven't got lightning. Damn. You would usually infuse lightning into yourself and then cast ice, or ice, and then do slicing. I can't. Hello, Indy, and I can't, Indy. They won't let me anymore. I've had to up the quality. I've had to. Thank you, Vaughn. My overall thoughts... My overall thoughts are... My overall thoughts are... <clears throat> Before the update, I would have said this is worth a buy. This is another one of those games that I think is worth the asking price straight off of the bat. It has got a lot of content, and if you like being stylish and killing with grace, then this is very much a game for you. The only problem that I've ever had with this game is the background graphics. Now... You know, but then the thing is, we're on a mobile fucking headset, you know? So, I think what needs to look important... I think what needs to look important does look good within this game. So, I'd recommend it. And, you know, it also means I can play cooperative with other people as well. I need to get Vaughn back on this so that we can play through the full game now in cooperative. Which should be fun. And, you know, if you both want to do, like, specific weaponry and specific classes now as well, there's just... If you like unlocking stuff and that stuff that you unlock fundamentally changes fundamental things about the stuff you already love within the game, for the better and sometimes the worse, then this is another game for you as well. It's really good. It really is really good. But, like I've said with anything, you don't need any game now. Wait for it to go on sale. You know, you can get it 25% off with my code, but I think this one has gone for 40% a couple of times. Oh, yeah, this is... So, what's cool as well is when you're in cooperative, you can both do slow time independently of each other, or if you are in each other's slow time bubble you can take advantage of your cooperative partner's slow times. So you can both be flipping through the air, firing together, a little high five as you go past, maybe a little foot kick, and then carry on fighting. And it's just, I don't know, it's just uh, that level of pissing around and shenanigans that I like. These are the other ones that will end your day. Note when I get close to it, it will do that pulse. That pulse can kill you in one on the earlier stages easily because it does a huge amount of damage. There's some really fantastic looking enemies in this as well. A lot of them are, well, there's all sorts. There's melee enemies and then there's these magic casters as one as well. And they also all get all different kinds of nasty elements. And like this one's a lightning variation of whatever that face is. This is a lightning variation of the tortured guy. That's a standard version of Spider Lady. They're all related to sins as well. It's all within the the, the seven sins. Seven? Oh, there's more than seven. No, the sneaky slugs are gone, Bob. I think they just got rid of them because they were just annoying. But they were useful for styling up on, I suppose. So... Shall we begin? Lightning is particularly great for getting your style up because it's actually quite weak. So it does lots and lots and lots of little hits. This is the lightning variant. And they haven't just changed the color with the different variants. They've also changed other elements about them as well. So, what else we got? These ones' heads detach when you kill them, so you have to finish them off. Most enemies can actually be completely ripped apart or eviscerated. You'll see that more. Oh, mister. 
He's not wrong. He's not wrong. So, yeah, all sorts of different. This, the, the thing is, there's not actually that many enemies in this game as well, but there's enough variety that, you know, you'll have favorites to kill because they're easy, and you'll have ones that are not your favorites because they're cunts. So, anyway, right. Let's carry on. I'm just making sure that we've got all of the chests and all of the totems because these are key points to doing well. Our style is about half of where it needs to be, hence why we're only getting half the number of rewards and souls. So we need to up those numbers. I think no. Hmm, more vault magic. We need to make this cheaper. Event Horizon will take that just so that I can show it off. So now, when I fire my lightning magic, I thought it was that. One. Huh. I thought I just might not take effect until the next one, then. That one usually changes what your spell does. And there's a few that do these, so then you can find even cooler stuff for your favorite magics. Tight spaces, dangerous turns, search for a way out of this maze. Maybe it's a different one as well. Little things within this. Note how when I am casting this, that my fingers are twitching. And it's those little details that you would expect from something like that. You can also give more forks of lightning to that lightning spell as well, the further you progress within the game. This is ideally where we would want a jade key, because we can use one jade key instead of three golden ones. When this is a vault level, so this is like a little bit of a treasure room maze, but you can also find yourself getting your ass kicked in here as well. There's a lot of those yellow totems, and they're all dropping keys. Let's see if we got any extra gold ones. Yes, we did. That's very satisfying as well, putting keys in. And unlike the rewards that you get at the end of the level, these are all going to be plus threes, because I used golden keys for them, and I can take them all. Don't have to choose. So we will go with... Which one was I think? I thought I just took that. Holding down. Ah, oh, right, okay. No, I know what that one is. It's a different one. Spark screen, another spark shark to enemies. Right, okay. So, Vault Magic, as you can see, is actually a very powerful magic and only has. I think most of the magics only have nine slots with them. So, we want to now start replacing some of the abilities that we didn't want. This is where this comes in. I can reduce the cost of AoE spells by 35%. That gets rid of this and the one that I just done which then frees up a space, and occasionally you'll get offered the bigger, better one straight off the bat. And we will get rid of... Oh, let's do some more damage with it. So now, you'll see that my... Oh, that was very good. You'll see that my mana goes down even slower again. We do want to increase our amount of mana that we've got, though, to really start seeing the effects of these things. Now, let's see what we can do with the bow. Let's have lingering attachments, which means that if we infuse a bow with an element, it sticks around for longer. And you can get quicker, more and more levels on that as well. Let's increase the durability of our bow so they don't get blown out of our hands. And let's increase our grappling hook. That bouncy arrow basically makes every arrow that you fire into a ricochet shot. And and this, if you like this element of it as well, crafting the 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 greatest, truest, bestest character, then this is another element that you will love about this game. It's one of my favourite ones. I do like a good roguelike. And they've got this one right. You can become stupidly powerful very quickly if you know what you're doing and when you've put the time in on it. Uh, I've got this to maximum level. Overheating Tempest will infuse it with Volt, which basically saves me having to infuse it. At the moment when it overloads, it kind of gets infused with fire. I'm not a massive fan of that one. There are some of these you don't want to take because they're not very good. Last round of the chamber? Yeah, alright, we'll take that one. 
prime shot. First shot after reloading does 25 damage. No, thank you. And let's go with increase overheat duration by 50%. Increase, no, 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 I don't want that either. Let's go with that and we'll skip that. Cool. Let's take these boys out for a little run. So, as I said, the beauty with these is you'll get challenges. You don't have to do them. You will get ambushed in these halls as well, which will give you gold and experience and so on. I do as something that I have in really recently enjoyed. Putting one weapon on top of the other while I do the keys. We had to go for silver there. I should go deep into the level and find more. Load of meta progression there. More lightning y. Want to replace that with discount. And we want to replace that with discount. And we want this. And shotguns. Everyone likes shotguns. Now, one of the things you are able to now do as well is you can get things that you are not using and skip the equipment step of them, but keep them in your inventory so that you can switch to them on the fly later if you want to by going into the pause menu. But most importantly, you can be leveling up things that you're not very good with whilst you make use of the things that you are good with. And the best way to do that is experience is gold. Increase the amount of experience earned by this skill because they're earning passive experience whilst you're not using them and then of course we flip that up and catch it and we're away so let's just start this one off yes i accept the challenge Get more demons i do really enjoy the gunplay of this i also like backflips seem to be one of the more powerful of the flip kinds because you get more air time and getting more air time means more combo time And this is all being done in that glorious slow motion. So I to keep on top of the kills. And I should be able to decimate this entire room without touching the floor. And that will get me a decent score for this. Now, if I can make sure... Uh, I didn't notice it. So, we've got a decent combo to begin with, which will be more than enough for us to get the style that we need to complete this correctly. That's more like it in the 100,000. You actually only... This is the maximum amount of rewards. This is the maximum amount of souls that you can get when you've pumped souls into a run. Just under 3,000 on coin and just under 100 on souls. Uh, you can increase that as well, I think with the boost and with it, well, it might just be the boost again i'm still playing with various bits and pieces now we do have to pick here let's add on to our bow do some more bow work when i start getting the bits and pieces lingering attachment let's take that out for a spin i'll get this bit done it's the next one where we it's the the missions where we start getting unlimited enemies where you can really go ham within this game. But the thing that I do like is you only have to be so stylish. You don't have to be all the stylish. reasonably comfortable with going upside down in this game. You really do get rewarded for it. Oh, hello. Mind if I borrow your katana? Thanks. And so melee combat is something that I haven't done an awful lot of. However, you can. That guy got sliced in half. And then, of course, you can do everything that you would do katana-wise upside down. So flipping, like, misty flip into decapitation are all options within this game. 
but it's pretty difficult. Much easier, much easier to shoot things or magic things. Unfortunately, all the demon weaponry is within this game now. But unfortunately, oh, I crushed it. All the demon weaponry is actually within this game and equipable now, but you can't level it up. And if I'm right, yeah, you can't infuse any of the demon weapons, but the different demons have different infused weapons. So you can get this with fire, with vault magic, and with ice magic on it as well. And each of the weapons, I think there's four main demon ones that you can get. But they do usually have something where if you hold trigger and then fire, you can fire something off of them. They're not particularly powerful, but, you know, it doesn't need to be when you've got a fucking huge... Well, it's not even a katana on me, is it? That's a fucking uh, Nodachi. Just one of those huge war samurai uh, katanas. Anyway, enough Nodachi. This is more like the level of style that we need to be getting. You can just... Some of the levels you can just... Or some of the little instances that you put into you can just keep going and going and going and get your style ridiculously high but it does cap out so you're kind of then at that point wasting your time these bullets i know that's quite a lame thing but these are really good because you get some attachments with them later that just assist you with everything gun wise we do need to increase our blood magic side of things we want to be more paid for violence yes we do so, let's have a look around. We'll do a little bit more bow work now. Oh, we've already been that way. Ah, memory. And there's the other thing as well is there's lots of blessings within this game that will allow you to change fundamental things about your character and how they work. If you want to play like an all-life, no-magic build and have your life as the thing that fuels your magic and then have like vampiric abilities and so on, well, you can do that. If you want to make it so that you never have to even see the floor anymore, you can do that too. But it is worth noting in these mazes, these yellow exits are exits to shops. We want to take those because we want shop visits as often as possible. Within these vaults, I've never seen it not offer a normal exit and a shop exit. But you still want to explore the entirety of the vault because there's a lot of money down here and a lot of chests. And a lot of totems that have a lot of keys. So more blood magic for us. Uh, we'll keep the discount high. Forge those, because they're good for making the big skip bells cost less. Not that that's too much of an issue. And then this will give us an additional blessing. Blessings can be very powerful. Cash for power. Every 500 cash, increase damage by 1%. I don't want to increase my damage, because that allows me to keep my combo high. The Taxman. Upon a fatal hit, restore 35% of health, but lose a portion of obols and souls. Obols are your currency. Um, this will save me getting embarrassed, I guess, won't it? Not that I want it, but... Or should need it. We should be... Fairly safe... At this point. When we get a level with unlimited... Enemies, I'll start making more use... Of the bow. Hey, how you doing? And it really is like once you've played it a bit, it's very easy to do all of what I'm doing. The, the hardest part, kick for you, the hardest part is going, is going up in the air and getting used to your orientation. There are tricks that I can talk to you about as far as the orientation, but that's more of a it's more of a martial arts thing, I suppose, where when you are upside down, tr just try and look ahead of you and then you can and tr try and sort of like narrow in on a point. You can put vignettes on for when you're doing all of your flipping and all of those bits and pieces as well. 
and I would highly recommend doing that if you are new to the medium of going upside down in VR. Another thing that I found that's actually quite useful as well is if you are doing sort of like a side flip and then push forward, you can do a barrel roll. And if you kind of use your head to follow the barrel roll, it can be a little bit less disorientating. Having said that, I play this game a lot and even every now and again, I go and have to like kind of not lock into a martial arts stance to make sure I don't fucking fall on my ass. Enhance so. your skills, Hell Sweeper. So that's what we want. That's maximum. Upgrades for weapons are all well and good. However, blessings come along very few and far between, as do stat upgrades, but they're usually not worth it. Replace one of your existing blessings with a new blessing, or I can just have a new one. Stakes are high, so I can increase this one to 30% when I get hit, or arrogance? Huh, sounds like my kind of trait. So I gain 120 max mana, but my mana regenerates slowly. This one's actually very good, because you can get your mana to a point where you never have to worry about it again. Let's carry on destroying all of these, so we can have more keys. That's the boss. If this is red, it's because the next level that you're going to is a level. If it is purple, it's because the next level that you're going to on is a boss. We want to go back for that yellow portal. The other thing that they have added to this game as well is there's now the ability... Normally there are all the levels and a boss at, each, at the end of each of them. There are three bosses within the game and then it's over, run, ended. You can change this into unlimited mode where you can just go on and on and on and on and on so you can get everything to top power and really start crunching those numbers. But obviously things get harder as you go along. So let's go and have a look at the shop, shall we? So, shop-wise, you've got the ability to refresh the shop or just buy things from single upgrades for the price denoted to stat upgrades, health, mana, and damage. None of these are what I want. Refresh, none of these. I do want to be careful with my gold because as I spend it, it reduces my shields. But... There's a specific thing that I am after. These jade keys. We want these. We like these. One more. No. I don't ever really want to increase my damage. And buying these, you only get plus one variants. As long as you have got lots of keys, you'll get loads of plus three variants of all the stuff that you have equipped or offered new. One of the other, I think, little no things about this game is you can go into weapons that you have and actually buy or replace things that you've got. So if you get a really shit deal as you're building your character, like, for instance, I don't want this, but I do one compact magazines so i'll replace that one with that one for a very small amount of gold i might add and then because i have the recipe i.e two of those i can then forge for a little bit more the exact thing that i do want really long clip there we go one of the other ones that and um, you can see all of the combinations that you need here to get these there are two that are undiscovered this means that i need to start experimenting with what i take it'll be because there's some in here that i never take the things that you get from them might be good usually not let's take another compact magazine and on the bow did we get things that we wanted Let's go there and want those. Not necessarily want those. A lot of the forged ones. Here you go, projectile mastery. Add another arrow to your multi-shot, which you can basically get this up to firing five shots at a time, although it is very mana intensive. But then you can make it so that your arrows will cost no mana to fire or reload, but damage will be halved, but that's really good with some of the other abilities. And then you've got the ability to pick up multiple bows and fire them all off at the same time, which we're working towards. I think I've got everything for these. Yes, I have. That'll do. The Tempests are 
at almost 40 a pop now and they can i've had them up to like in the 60s i think almost the equivalent of um of the old uh ppsh mags so oh and to whoever said about apologies i don't think i actually answered you to whoever said about doing itr streams yeah, probably. Let me get this little series of videos that I'm doing and then I'll probably do a live stream from start and take through everybody through it live. Might be quite a good little stream to have. One of the things that they have added, as well as the clue and the actual boss itself, is an elemental variation of each of the bosses. These are harder and I can't see a benefit for doing them other than they don't just roll over as soon as you start firing. The other thing that the game does as well when you are fighting on the higher levels of difficulty than normal is it changes the order of the bosses round to random. So, for instance, this guy's normally the end boss. Now, this is a first, but there's actually two of him. So, this could be interesting. I mean, he's probably not going to last very long. Oh, we need to be doing that one. Although there's two of them, they're probably weaker variants. And I just go under your neck a second. Cheers. Now, with these end bosses, all you have to do, or with this kind of boss, all you have to do is shoot him enough so that he is then weakened. And then blast the rings that are on his neck and limbs here. And, you know, it takes a little level of precision, I guess. But as long as we're in slow motion and upside down whilst we're doing it, not particularly difficult. When you see this blue ring, you need to stay within it. If you see a red ring, you need to get out of it, is the, the other key to this boss. The other thing that we can be doing as well whilst we're comboing off of the bosses is also using these multipliers to kill enemies. That's how you get your style bonuses. So that one we need to get away from, otherwise we'll get blasted by it. I see the other boss. There he is. Hello. Okay. One boss down. Let's get away from those that ring of red. Now we can do with getting a bit of a combo going, so let's let some enemies come in. And then let's start a combo off with that. Then kill you. Then kill you. Get inside the blue. Another little flippy. Destroy this. Oh, uh, Can you move your head? Please. Thank you. Oh, let's backflip it then. You can also combo off of the hands. Right, so we need to stay within this. And then we need to get out of this one. Uh, have some of this. You'll probably see that I, as I'm doing all of this as well, I am taking hits, but I'm not really taking much damage, and that's because of the sheer amount of shields that we've got. And when you have enough, they regenerate back so quickly that you never have to worry about your health again. You don't always get off of those things, and if you do a random run, you won't be able to pick any of these things either. But, now, this is, the magic usually can't destroy the links around corruption, that's the, the boss's name. But these magics, because they do physical damage, can. Normal magic can't. So, but they may have updated that, they may have changed that slightly, so... Cool. Now, now for defeating a boss, we get a blessing, which then makes our character even more powerful. That's about the exact amount of skill that you want to get in that 45 to 50,000. And then let's have a blessing. If you get bad blessings, because there are some, you can remove them in the shop. After image, reduced damage taken by 15% during jumps, sliding, wall running, and somersaults. Uh, yeah. Easy choice. And there's lots of those as well lots and lots now here's another fundamental factor for when you are leveling up coin and souls 
convert at a percentage rate to give you souls now. And then this amount of souls, plus whatever else will end, will be given to us at the end. But some of it is given to us now. When you are going through the game, you'll see that you'll be leveling up various items. If you level up an item and leave it at its maximum, it doesn't stack the next level's worth of experience on top. You just will stop gaining experience for it, so it is very important. As you are playing through the game, to rest at the hall, and if you have the souls to do so, go back and upgrade the items there and then so that you can be making more experience the for them was right as you go. All the upgrading is done here, it's all train. very simple. This little up arrow indicates that something is on here that needs upgrading. We're going to go to what does need upgrading, which I think is just the staff. Find the appropriate circle, and as you can see, we haven't got the souls to be able to do that. Upgrading these unlocks even more skills for you to be able to find and makes them more powerful or more mana better off of the bat, or mana better, mana better. There are no additional cosmetics at the moment, but you can change things about the colours, but these all cost souls, and we don't want to be wasting those just yet. Uh, it's literally just that, so we just need more souls, basically. Cool. Right, no worries. Back at it. The sweep never sleeps. No, not wrong. The appearance side of things at the moment looks like it, the fundamentals have been set up. Like, for instance, the doggo that you can summon in this game has three different kinds of uh, chew toys that you can get for him. And they're different cosmetics. I'd imagine there will be some staff changes and some gun cosmetic changes. At the moment, you can just change the color, which to my eye just changes things like the laser or the pointer on them or what have you. So nothing cosmetic really but it's a start the fundamentals are in place mm. oh yeah where's my water better drink some of that hell it's sweeping hell's a bloody thirsty job don't you know mm. and so yeah this is another one of those games where <laughs> i know this is gonna sound strange so don't all gasp at once there are only a few games that I can continually talk about. One of them is IDU. Another one of is, in, is Into the Radius. Hell Sweepers is also a game that I can continually talk about forever because there's so fucking much in it. Now, I know I do talk a lot. But not all of it is going to be game knowledge. Whereas with this, I can just go on and on and on about efficiency and tactics and strategies and best weapons and various bits and bobs. Till the cows come home, because there's that level of content in it, it's ridiculous. Now, this is a different kind of mission. These are the ones where you can really go to ham on style. You destroy these totems to end the level. Until you destroy them all, there are basically infinite enemies. My kind of mission. We're going to get rid of some of them. Your location. Destroy these vile structures. I know, I know. It, I, I know these are like revelations to you lot, but I, I talk a lot, I'm, I know. Oh, without a head but still fighting, eh? You see my multiplier going on. This is all with, these are available very early on. Tempest, these, the, the Tempests are available very early on. As long as you keep the kills coming in, you can keep that times multiplier very high. To be getting kills whilst the multiplier is high. The multiplier goes up infinitely until you make your first kill. Then you're on, like, for those of you who have played ID, then you're on your executioner timer. So you need to be doing, uh, you're juggling a lot of things, but right. Prompt has said we'll start using the bow some. There we go. Let's start using the bow, shall we? Because we've got the ability to. So the enemies, as you progress as well, start getting a little bit harder and a little bit more deadly, as well as more HP. 
hit him in the head. I'll hit him in the head. And you'll also see, excuse me, you'll also see that you get various categories of things for doing things as well. You can also Super Mario off of most enemies as well and kind of stomp them. Purple arrows? Yeah. Enough hits into his helmet will destroy it, allowing you to get the headshot. That wasn't a very good example. Which shots do you want to take? Maybe our bow needs upgrading. There we go. 4,650 style points. If we can keep this going, which is quite difficult with the bow, we can also pull enemies of a smaller kind towards us and stay tethered to them, which is just, just fun. Come here. Uh, I think that might have blocked that a little bit. So the bigger enemies, oh no, even the bigger enemies you can pull. Most enemies you can take the limbs off of as well. my bow. I'll conjure another one. So I'm doing multiple arrows. It's going to make it very difficult. Come on. Come on, magic or something. Come on now. And you can mix things up as you're doing it as well. See that I'm actually struggling for mana at the moment because that bow is very mana intensive until we level it up a little bit. Even reloads cost you mana in this game, so you do have to be careful with that as well. Look it, but believe you me, you can become the beautiful ballerina of death that I'm doing here. <laughs> In several simple steps. You can also put this game, providing you have the mana, into slow time, which I've started doing so that I can get a kill as I land and then get back into the air again. See this blue around me? That is me in slow time. But it's part of the reason why I make the point of always being vertically misplaced. Is that this all puts you into slow time without using your mana. If you do turn it on, whilst you're upside down, it adds a drain onto your mana that you don't need. But it just makes... So you can play the entire game in slow motion almost at a push of a button when you get your mana to a certain stage which can really help you learn how to play the game. Durability of weaponry does become a real factor as well, because you can use your guns to block attacks, but they only last so long. Hey! Go back to the boat with these guys. Ow, ow, ow. Look at that, that didn't even touch my shields. with a uh, bow and arrow. 
sorry, love. Yeah, these armoured guys are probably better off to deal with with guns. And you can also play the game in real time as well, without any clips, in which case it just becomes sort of like a wave shooter, doomy clone sort of thing, but obviously you can do a lot more with it. This isn't very good for your style though, because you need to make sure you are killing quickly. So it's not so great on the combo side of things, but they are dropping a lot of money as all this is happening. I can facilitate all of this by making the magic more powerful, and also by joining in with the work that's being done by these uh, evil hosts, if I remember rightly. So wait for our mana to come back, and let's join in. And then that'll allow us to keep the combos going even worse. All better. is probably, yeah, 50,447. That's enough style points to complete the level on. So we don't actually need to kill anything more now. Anything more that I do. How many legs are you missing? Can I get another one? Oh, I could, but you blew up four there. Using weapons to block attacks may save you in the moment, but it will also shorten their Well, life. yeah, but what else do you want me to do? Get out of the way? Come on now. I don't need to, I can face tank everything, I got my shields. So one of the other things that I want to make a point of doing... Ah, uh, we haven't got the magic. Hmm, do that way, maybe. And as I said, there's, there's a lot of different things within this game that can make something that might appear rubbish so much better. Like this one here, retrieve the last held object by quickly double pressing the grip button. That's actually really good if you can get into the habit of doing it, because it then means if you manage to drop something by accident, which can happen, you can quickly get it back. Let's reduce mana. And rock spit up creates an additional rock. It's actually a really good ability, so now instead of summoning one, we summon two. And we can do that on both hands as well. And chuck them. You can get up to three in each hand. And we can still also do this, but you kind of... I get the feeling that you want to infuse that with an element before you put it on. Look at that. Thanos eat your heart out. He's got one, I've got four. And then I can actually use these. So this is the part of the game that even I haven't done that much of. The melee side of things. I mean, who's going to argue with that? Huh? And so you can, and, and again, you know, you can do all of this upside down. I don't even need to be close to them. It's just very manner intensive. And then you can launch them off like rockets. 
so Thanos and Iron Man combined in hockey like format at last. Right, any more for any more. <laughs> yep, yep. The one thing that I don't understand with this game is how it is such a sleeper of a game. I see no one streaming it, I see no one playing it, I see no one talking about it. The one thing that I will say is it got a bit of a bad rub when it first came out, and that's because the graphics were rubbish on both Quest and PC VR, and um, I just don't think the game recovered from that. But then there's also the possibility that there's kind of a, a bit of a bar to entry on the whole skill side of things, but this can be as skillful or just smashing things up as much as you like on an easy basis, however you want to play it. It is a difficult game as well, I'll give it that much, but they have uh, reduced that recently. Uh, paid violence, yes. Let's see if we can add some more to the mage stats, some interesting things. Study me, increase damage of magic spells, this is good. Mix the nuts as we increase the properties on our lightning, we'll increase the properties of the lightning on the staff as well. So that one's worthwhile taking. Increase the number of grand big spells, 100%. No, I don't want that. Uh, let's make the staff more durable. And then bullets. I think I've already... This one, Liberty. Conjure bullets will not cost mana. If bullets are equipped on either shoulder or hip, bring the gun to the equipped slot to reload. This is really good. Really, really good. So now, and you can do all of this on the fly whilst you're playing, providing you've unlocked them. If I was to change the staff to, or is it not gonna, no, it's not gonna let me because I haven't got the pistol, I don't think. No, it's not because the bullets... The bullets are associated with the pistol, but they also work with this. You'll see here as well, I've got the ability to actually equip the Pride's Katana, Butcher's Knife, Fury's Blade, or Envy's Scythe at any time. Just the standard versions, nothing uh, particularly special. Ah, well, we'll play around with that in another run. I dare say we'll have... Oh, we might have time, I don't know. What In fact, what time are we? Because this is another thing as well, is you can have a lot of fun in this game. There, and, and, and it seems like it's going very quickly, but like, you know, to me it doesn't feel like I've been playing for over an hour and a half. For me it feels like I've just got going. It's been like five minutes. Stone this is one of those games. What will you do? Hello, K2. Um, that's the one that we want, but I don't think it's going to let me... No, it's not going to let me equip it, because this is supposed to be associated with the pistol. Hello, Travis. Yeah, the upgrade system on this is fantastic. It's, it, again, like, we all come from a background, or the vast majority of you are watching on here, come from a background of... of of a decent upgrade system, but not really a roguelike system. More of just an unlock via achievement, i.e. in Death Unchained. That's not usually how roguelikes do it. Usually, what we have in In Death Unchained is the meta progression and then just buying things. Uh, can you imagine In Death Unchained, a mode in that way? You just start off with the normal bow, and then you get rewards for either from the shop or completing levels, and it allows you to buy, say, wild arrows, which you can then make be multiple variants, do more damage, do more burning, have more nasty effects, and just upgrade in and upgrade in and upgrade in. And if they put enough depth into that, it's one of the things that I suggested they do with Siege of Heaven to make that more interesting is instead of just buying crappy special arrows between shops, upgrading your character so, and then it getting harder and harder and going on an infinite, I think it would be a completely different feeling mode and could have been really good. But yeah, the, the upgrading system and the level of power that you can get on this game is absolutely ridiculous. Look at it go. Right, next level. And it'll usually take me... 
well, they put more vaults into the game now, which do extend the time, because you can get through a lot of these. You can get, I can get through a run in about 40, 50 minutes. But the more vaults and the more you really go to town on the vaults, the uh, longer the game can become. Ooh, just the number of keys that we need. So these will definitely be plus three rewards. And then because it was a two key, we get two of them. Haven't actually played a lot with Blast. Increased damage of Radio Blast. It, what, hey, there's a... Well, yeah. Yours and mine both. Hey, it would be fun, though. It would be fun, though. So even our own... Punch Girl has got a specific power within this game, very much like in Dead Hook. Um, I've already got it equipped. None of these are really any good. Probably have to replace that later. And um, more compact magazine, because compact magazine good. It's like one of the things, again, holding trigger, we can do a concussive blast and a proper blast as well. And then you can just power these up so that they do multiples off of one cast. This is how you're supposed to break shields on the game using concussive blasts or hurling objects into things, of which there are usually lots and lots. And then you've also got enemy bodies and body parts that pile up as well. So this one is another infinite mode. This is one that's easy to get the maximum style on by not fighting within this bubble. Don't waste you your need time to kill things within the bubble. The if we kill them shelter, outside of the bubble, we get the style for them and the level keeps on the level. Any more? I need things to kill. That's one. Gonna need more things to kill. Hold on a second, demons. I need to change my battery. I just heard the beep for a change. There we go. Alright, carry on. Have I, I I don't know if you've been watching whilst I've been playing with the bow, Travis. The bow is particularly great. Flying around on the job, eh? This is... I, I wish you were able to go upside down in our view. I really do. I mean, it wouldn't really suit it, but... It's still be cool as fuck. No, let me jump! Let me fly! on it as well. Still tempered, eh? You, you're the one doing all the damage to me, as I said previously. So what do you press in? No, you just have to tap it. Enough things died within the circle there that the level was completed. We probably did enough. There was probably one or two kills there that were particularly stylish. So we probably got enough. It's also worth, I think I said as well about the air dash. It does use mana. But you can get it to a point where your air dash doesn't do anything. Another thing that I barely do in this as well is if you duck in real life, when you land, you can do that slide. 
that you just saw me do and that adds onto your style side of things as well and can keep your combo points high Enhance your but yeah pop in lightning onto it to then make it a probably see well yeah you can't see it very well but that turns into a triple shot lovely and have we got enough to no we've got the ability later on to be able to get two of these and have three uh, didn't you if you were here at the start you can have three bows one in your hand one floating either side and then as you're notching and firing arrows they are as well and then you can do it in slow motion and upside down because <laughs> that's how we do uh no so now all of these choices are not particularly good ones i'm looking for decent levels so you'll see that it says question marks totem which is a particular level and then there are i don't know Oh, that's, yeah, that's the symbol for totem. This basically means that all the enemies that are going to be coming at us on that one, these are map modifiers, but all the enemies that are going to be coming on that one are all going to be the same. And then this one is just wave mode. Then this one is the sacrifice mode, which we just did. But all the enemies are going to be fire type. Depending on what enemy this is, could actually be very lucrative. And yes, very steampunkish. Um, the assault rifle in this looks quite steampunkish as well. Um, I don't know if we've got that to full level. Punching forward will create a magical projectile. Deal. Okay. So there's something that now changes the property of the gut of the thing. Where that I can. Is it just a pun normal punch forward? He said, oh, ah, normal punches forward. So now we can go hand to hand. I mean, they're not very accurate. That might just be me. I'm not used to firing projectiles from my fists when I punch. They're wildly inaccurate. But at the, at the distances you would be doing at them, it wouldn't really matter. You're going to be able to hit them. I wonder if it's better in slow motion. It wants me to do kung fu punches as opposed to twisty karate punches like I'm used to. It wants me to do those kind. Okay. I see you, China, and your kung fu. Alright, let's make sure we've got all the chests. And those. Yep, yep. Got those ones. There you are. Lovely. Not having to be close enough to pick all of these up and the keys is also... When I first looked at it, I was like, oh, I kind of like picking up all the keys and doing all those bits and pieces. And then I remembered about shooting things and keys falling off of the level. And I was like, yeah, this is a great idea. Fuck the old system. This is much better. Where's the exit again? Where's the exit? Over there. It's one of the few games I actually leave full body on for as well because I think there's something quite special about full body within this. Your limbs can't get in the way of you, but you feel naturally inclined to manoeuvre your guns and swords around them so that you don't slice them off, which is, again, very cool. So this is single enemy type. Now, the reason why this one can be very lucrative is the enemies in this game that are kind of like hellish Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles not that they're turtles but that they have a massive shell on their back actually hold money within that shell and so if you can get infinite enemies and keep killing them and they're just giving you money like all these totems are well you can just get an infinite amount of money more money means more souls at the end of the run more souls at the end of the run means more meta progression more meta progression means even more powerful and we do like more powerful the totems are like right. so let's get rid of one or two of these these are not the enemies that we were looking for unfortunately so we'll get this one over 
reasonably quickly. Although that is a lot of prideful samurais. These attacks are absolutely nasty also. Now, we should, however, having said everything that I just said, as these things are dismembering these guys, because look, they stand no chance, and I can cast an infinite number of these, and they'll just go off and do my bidding when the guys get into range. They're not particularly good on the combo, but notice how they're all dropping money as they die, and the reason being is because paid violence is a skill within this game that we possess. This skill only gets better as well. You can make, do it for less mana, which then means you can have more of these out there doing the work for you. This isn't particularly stylish. You're not getting a massive amount of points for doing this, but you have one as well. You're not getting a massive amount of points for doing this, but I'm not having to really do a lot of work. It's glorious, really, isn't it? Ooh, let's... Let's cast a different one. Yep. yep. What do you do? I think this one's closer ranged. So... And there's another one as well that... Oh, no, no, there you go. Look at that. Oh, isn't it glorious? The heavens are on my side as well as blood magic now. Excellent. And this is just simply done... These powerful magics are simply done by... Creating the magic based on whatever gesture it is that you would normally do, be it up, down, left, or right. Smushing them together, pointing them at the enemy to get that, and then firing. And then off they go. These ones are shorter ranged, obviously, than the normal evil hosts. But they seem to be a lot more bloody powerful. The problem is they're not dismembering. And dismembering is what we get paid for. That paid violence. So let's get some more of those out. It is governed by our mana, which you'll see is almost bottom all the time. If you're watching as well, I take a lot of hits and I am barely taking any damage even on my shield. And it's because my shield stat is so high that it doesn't matter. And what are we earning whilst we're killing these guys? More money. And what does more money mean? More shields. And what does more shields mean? Even less chance of being able to be killed. Eventually, these evil hosts will destroy all the totems, but I think we'll get the style that we need, like 5,000, 26,000. So they're doing quite a good job. They're not able to stay out for very long after being summoned, but that we can change. Well, I can just face tank all of this. And we're on veteran as well, and these tactics work all the way up until, well, kind of masochistic, I guess. As long as you stay far enough away from the last totem, I find a lot of the time, these guys won't get close enough to kill it, but sometimes they do. What's that? And then all this, so this is a good way to make a lot of money at, towards going into a run, which then gets you even more souls. Now, it isn't just souls you need to level up. You also need to do work with the weaponry or at least have them equipped. So, but yeah, aren't they beautiful? Right, let's get this level finished off. Blood magic. Fucking ridiculous. Tempests. The SMGs that I'm using. Absolutely ridiculous. The only problem with blood magic is it costs a lot of mana to fire it off. But if you can summon two, smush and fire quickly enough, that doesn't matter either. You don't want your elegy to fail you in the middle of a fight. He'll always tell you off for using all of your elegy as well if you are using blood magic because you always will be using it all because it's just the nature of the beast. Ah, a little hidden chest. Lovely. So jade keys would put a gold key in each lock. We want to save jade keys so that we can save our number of gold keys. This should give us two rewards both at level three. Reasonably good. This we like. Unholy is the thing that's related to the blood magic very nicely, in that we want more paid violence. Uh, we don't need anything else, and I don't want to increase the damage of anything that I'm doing. Increased damage of exploding bodies? Nah, not really. We'll just put these in as placeholders. And then more tempesty skills? Yes. Um, five link discount. And... Yeah, a little bit more damage, I think. Isn't too bad. And, ooh, tactical grenade. Throwing an overheated tempest will cause it to explode upon impact. So these are the little things that I'm talking about that kind of change the way you game. I don't think I've ever played that. Let's see if that's one of the hidden ones. 
one of the hidden recipes. Uh, bear with me. Oh, I won't be able to tell yet. I have to wait until we get to a shop. So let's see how that works. So firing them for a longer period of time makes them overheat and go to a slower, more accurate rate of fire, and then throwing them now makes them explode when they hit on impact. So, and, you know, if you get the the right stats, you don't have to worry about summoning multiple of these. It does cost mana to summon, and it does cost mana to reload. But as you make these things more powerful within your run, those factors become inconsequential. They really do. That's more. That's three times the style we need to get the maximum amount of rewards in both coin and souls. And we will take more of you. Give me paid violence, damn it. I mean, I am being paid rather handsomely for violence already. Statements I never thought I would say. Right, any chests about? The one thing, although the game is... They've definitely improved the skyboxes. And although the game is... It's a little bit dodgy in some of the graphical areas and some of the bits and pieces. But they do, they have done a really good job. Even with the rubbish graphics of the background, they've done such a good job of world building. Like, I can see that that's the top of an apartment. What the fuck are we doing up here in this red hellscape sky? And, you know, you can see bits of buildings as well as... Uh, well, this looks kind of like the... Oh, ah, so this is where they put the floor in from In Death Unchained. It ended up in hell. Makes sense, really, doesn't it? And it's just, it just feels very hellscapey, even though the graphics haven't been done particularly well for the environment. You know where you are. Somewhere between hell and limbo, I think. Most of the time, anyway. What are we doing on time? 10 o'clock. I've just done a battery swap. Might even have to what, start looking into the Quest 3 batteries, because I think my Quest 2 batteries are starting to give up the ghost. I think I might be using them too much. Um, Blood magic can actually be a bit of a detriment on this one, because the things will always home in to where that sphere is, because there'll usually be enemies spawning in there. Fill up on Make sure... Killing demons around we get the maximum amount of style before we complete the mission. Let's see how much we can face tank. small moth may have come over and landed gently upon a finger just then. I think that's what that sensation was. So as you can see, Gilded Boots and having a lot of money, my shield is recharging at a rate quicker than they can really do damage. So I can just sit here in a horde of deadly and dangerous enemies, pretty much just face tank it. And I would, oh, this isn't even into my life bar yet. And then I would only need a few seconds to recover that as well. So... But I do like overpowered within these games. But then the thing is, as well, you're also manoeuvrable enough that none of this should actually matter. It doesn't matter how much damage you can take because you can put out so much damage that things are already dead before they even get anywhere near you. Go on, lads, get in there, sons. This isn't. This is one of the new enemies, Rat. He lasts about as long as everybody else does. There is a small element of auto-aim within the throwing within this kind of... Oh, that's another thing as well. I think Zane mentioned um, uh, Asgard's Wrath. I have played that one quite extensively, but I've got that Skyrim problem with it at the moment. Is if I went back to it now, I wouldn't know what it is that I was supposed to be doing because I've made the mistake of leaving it so fucking long that I don't know what quest I'm doing, what I was most involved with recently, and these are all real first world problems. Oh, blocking, eh? <laughs> uh, bear in mind as well.
well though, I don't have this on the top difficulty. The top difficulty is designed for when you're at this level of power. I'd like to think that what I'm doing, the ease of which I can pull all of these manoeuvres off, like one minute I'm just sat there casting spells, the next minute I'm flipping upside down shooting people with SMGs. And I'd like to think that the speed of which that I can do it and the ease, I'm not having to do an awful lot of movement or gestures or even like stick combinations to do any of this. A lot of it is point, point jerk thumb stick in one direction, put arms up in the air until flip and then shoot. Easy. Right? Right? It's getting the orientation that you need Keep an eye on that, that can take practice. On the back of your oh, head. here's the thing. It represents your energy. I completely... You just gave me a really good idea. So, not only can we equip various elements to our bow, but we can also equip various things to our bow, and they then get mutated into different arrows with different effects. So, for instance, we can put our machine gun into our bow and that then gets changed into a different kind of... Well, that was a multi-shot arrow. Um, we can even summon the little bug guy and he'll go on the arrow also and I think that turns it into a bouncy one. Oh, no, I don't know. I haven't found out what... Come back here. I haven't found out what that does yet, but it looks nasty and dangerous and very spiky. It just doesn't last very long. Is the only problem. Oh, actually, have I got more? I got multiple shots. Come on, back you there. But you can also do this with sort of like enemies, weaponry and arms. Like, you know, I can pick up, should be able to pick up. Pick up. Okay, pick up this. And and that will create a blood arrow. How many did you get? Oh, it infuses the actual bow with blood. Whereas if I pick up this and then will that go will the arm go on there? Yep, and that makes a blood arrow as well. So there is a limited nut selection of things that these things do. But the fact that you can like scavenge from the battlefield and then start equipping it to your bow is a very cool element. The bow play as well. For those of you who are, I'm surprised nobody's asked yet, maybe there's not so many IDU faithful here other than uh, Travis and Sarah, but the, well, and Sarah knows anyway, the bow is on trigger, which makes it all the nicer and all the better. The one thing that I would say for anyone who's playing this, if you pick up the bow and you want to use it effectively, go into the settings and change the bow settings to both. If you have it so that it is only controlled by this arm, it does make it very stable, but it's not what you're going to be used to from IDU. Whereas if you change it to both, you're then able to rotate the bow's direction with this hand as well as this hand. And that can make all the difference. This line here as well, that's not actually where the arrow's going. You can't turn that off. That's where my... Um, it's not like an arrow line projectile. Although I wouldn't be surprised if you can't either put that on or unlock it. But I usually turn those sort of things off. But that's just so that we know where our hookshot thing is going. Oh, come on, hook me up there. No? Not liking it. Maybe it's not grabbing onto that. But yeah, proper swinging around like Spider-Man you can. Not a great swinging mechanic in this one, but it doesn't need to be. You use it for bringing things towards you or getting close to things whilst you're upside down and in slow motion. Let's have more lightning -y. Wave. Survival. Survival. Eh, no, let's get more staff stuff. Still survival. Uh, five finger discount. And then this is the forged version. Just dazzling manner. Reduce the cost of magic spells by 10%. This is very good. You can have up to... If the little infinity sign is next to that, you can have unlimited of them. But often with the more powerful numbers, you'll only be able to forge so many of them. With that one, you're only able to forge four. Uh, was there a chest on this bit? Yes, there was. There's chests. This 
last one is one that I'm still leveling up. This will allow us to levitate additional objects. Oh, no, no, we want that. Uh, King's Grave is very good. Levitating ob objects will not cost mana. That's very good. Because that then allows you to do things like... And if I could summon more, that then allows me to be able to do things like this at zero mana cost. And even the reload isn't enough. It depletes my mana a little bit, but I don't even have to reload anymore. I can just do this. And, and it's actually quite easy to make them shoot where you want to. It does help you in that regard. And then again, of course, as well, can you do that upside down? Well, you're God's damn right you can. And then if you do that same levitation trick with a melee weapon, you then basically become a lawnmower of some description. And you can get up to, I've had, I think it was like three swords in each hand, all spinning around. And then at this point, you can then go upside down and just, just tear everything to pieces with your spinning weaponry. It's really good. Uh, thank you, Von. I think I changed my battery recently, but I will have a quick check. Yes. Right. Enough talk. <laughs> Says who. Done that one. None in there. Cool. Let's go. try and actually get a run finished tonight and then if anybody's about I want to have a a bit of a test on wood potentially so maybe let's make this a bit quicker Ooh. Uh, when you get the maximum number you then need to start picking which ones you're going to replace it with so let's reduce that and Let's get rid of... what's that one? That's exploding bodies, we don't want that. Put a mithril finish on them. Uh, so yeah, let's make it this one nice and quick. This one's just survival, so I just basically need to not die. And as we've already demonstrated, that's not happening. And then if I've got these boys out there doing this, i just got to basically last a minute. Now, again, remember, I've been playing this for a while, so I know the juicy combos, and I've ranked up quite a lot, so this game may look easy, but there are levels of magnitude and hardness that you can add onto this as well, that then will really give you that level of challenge that you may be after. As I said, this is all earning me not silly amounts of money, but every kill is a violent dismemberment, and any dismemberment that we get pays us cash, and I can just buy an infinite of these off now because of the ability that I found and unlocked, and add this equipment from the start. One of the things that I have found that you can do, but I didn't do it for tonight because I wanted to show off specific things in this stream, as opposed to, you know, the usual humdrum that you can come across is, as I said, there is, not only is there an endless mode within this, but there is also a mode that allows you to basically, you randomly get generated the weapons that you're going to go out with. So what that then means is you then have to learn to play with everything because you might get a run where you don't get any guns offered at all. You might get a run where you only get hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons and then your play style needs to change. I got a run where I only got offered the magic staff and that's where I was able to find out about that ability because I didn't get any magic for it and it basically meant that it didn't become useless. Yeah, so this now has the ability that our lightning has, which means that I can keep that black hole there. 
as long as my mana holds out for quite a long time just by holding the trigger down. And that one will stay out a lot longer. That one is a very powerful spell as well for what it is. But yeah, I think I think the game... Someone will have to check for me. I think the game last time I checked was twenty one ninety nine or twenty two ninety nine, which is on the top end of. But I'd say for what you're getting within the game, if this looks even remotely fun to you, is well worth the asking price because there is a lot of content here. I've been playing. I've played this all the way through on the Pico version. Then they've changed and added a lot of things. Some of it fundamental, like the class system that was is within this now that allows you to start specializing your character down separate branches. I haven't even really touched yet. Oh, there's a battle axe. Maybe we'll pop that on in a minute. Uh, I'll skip it for now, though. We can equip it later. But I do want to level this up whilst... Because I'm not... I haven't really played much with the melee things. You'll see a lot of the melee weapons are very powerful because they have a lot of slots that you can add the extra stuff to. Which is really cool. Look at this. Performing air juggles will hit nearby enemies. So, air juggling. Again, this is the devil may cry of VR. Let's live. Levitate. 29. Yeah, so that's like 22.99. I think it's well worth the price. This we will have now. And more rocks. And more rocks split. Yeah. So now, when we levitate rocks, we don't just levitate one, we levitate three. And we can also keep these in the air unlimitedly, and we can just hurl them at our opponents. So if you want to become the, you know, like in, oh, what was the game called again? What was the Earthbender game I said? Oh, I can't remember the name anymore. It's already escaped me. But that one, you want to be the Earthbender in this game, you can be and chuck rocks at people all day if you so desire. But yeah, twenty nine ninety nine, and then with like a, if you know someone who's got this, as I said, I've got it. But if you know someone who's got this or has got a code, you can then get a further twenty five percent. I'd sell it's, I'd sell it's well worth the price of that for the account, and that's the one rumble. I'd say it is well worth the price for the content. And the the one thing that I would say is, this isn't a. I mean, it is. Is it a sandbox game? I mean, if it is, it's a lot more entertaining. You don't have to make your own fun. You do in sandbox games, but this, as I said, has got a full-on roguelike. There's there's rhyme and reason to play it, and it's got co-op as well, so if you can convince a buddy to get it, going through both of you flipping upside down, firing machine guns at demons, well, if that's your kind of thing, and even if firing machine guns isn't your kind of thing, there's magic, and there's hand-to-hand -hand combat, and there's armed combat, and there's bows, and all sorts. All sorts. Many, many ways to play this game. And the thing is, if you like this style of game, you will find a favourite, and you can use that favourite to power up all the things that you're not very good at or don't like until they either become something that you definitely want to use or something that works its way into your playstyle. Should we get some more lightning? I know we've got this on maximum, but we haven't had any lightning emperors yet. Uh, shocked enemies will create a small explosion when hit dealing. Yeah, okay. Let's do some more staff play, shall we? Almost at the boss. Oh, is, that, is this a vault? Yes, this is a vault. This will allow us to get a lot of level ups quite quickly. Beware of what lurks behind the corners. Find a way out. One of the things that staffs are amazing for are these. That's one. I know I'm being a little bit boring, but I like same in both hands. Just makes things easier. More lightning, please. Ooh, more gold. Uh, hello, Slaying. Yeah, it's, to be fair, that sort of game we are very late to the party on. And, um, yeah, I didn't do too bad. But 
I've unwrapped tactics all the way from now on. I'll be uh, playing for the win. It won't make the most glorious looking of streams, but what I'd like to think is I can play that game all right. I'm nothing special. And I would imagine there's going to be a lot of people that are going to play that game and going to be in a similar situation. If I can give you a way to win, even if you are rubbish at the game, well then, that's got to be worth watching, right? But it's got to be recreated. And that's what I intend to do with that game. Unbeknownst to everybody and to everybody else's hatred. Indy's already getting quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of hate for that video that he put out. People telling him, "No, that's just in just in competitive games." Well, if you've played those games a lot in VR, I bet you're a big Population One fan then, or a big Population One player. I've never played the game. Oh, Population One didn't really do it for me because, well, it was a bit Fortnitey for my liking, if I'm honest. It's good, don't get me wrong, it's just not my sort of game. Uh, me too. I've heard it only strengthens your hard on indie, so, you know. People should really stop hating you, now they know that fact. Hey, if you can't be famous, be infamous. And yeah, the other problem that we had as well, Slane, is... I assume you win all the time as a three stack, or are you doing it by yourself? Ah, right, okay. Well, maybe we got you a couple of times, maybe you got us a couple of times. I don't think there's that many people ratting. And to be fair, if you're catching them when they're skimming the zone, then they ain't ratting properly. These will make these levels quite quickly. Oink, oink. Hey, what's going on? I don't even know how many points that is, but I can tell you it's a lot. That's also a lot of points. Ah, there you go then. Anyone we know? But then this is the thing as well, is the vast majority of people who play those sort of FPSs and show off all of their wins are probably professionals. I'm not professional. I don't know what I am. Not a FPS anyway. I'm a bow guy, for Christ's sake. Go and find me on the leadboards on IDU, not on games like that. But I'll give them a go, and if I can find a tactic that wins, well... And if it's recreatable, well... Yeah, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't. A lot of people who are the big tubers would not. It's only the wins. I mean, look at Indy, for instance. He's another one of those YouTuber pricks. He just posts his wins. Never posts his losses. <laughs> Because there was only just enough for us to get three together for this video. <laughs> uh. You can see, as you can see, these uh, lightning wands are very good for clearing. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they'll get you. <laughs> Quicker. As I said within here, you do get ambushed from time to time. Kikarin, I'm smashing demon booty. With my lightning emperor ways. Put that man back now. Hey Kieran, check this out. Bow, right? But it's upside down! Yes, she 
is tethered to my bow. And there's nothing she can do about it. Doubles. Excuse me. And this is all... I'm not doing this to show off either. This is all in the name of style. And style is what gets you the points within this game. No. No. Yes, let's try and get some more on the staff. Since that's what we're using. More damage. It's for style slaying! <laughs> I mean, you know, if I'm going to come on and play this game, I've got to play it to at least a reasonable level of uh, competency. So, although having said that, there are things that would allow you not to. I'd say anybody can pick up one of these, put lightning magic in it, and then just walk around doing that. Because it's not difficult, is it? And then you can just double up on that as well. Did that make a lightning arrow? No, just a standard one. So, but yeah, genuinely, when you are upside down, you get times four multiplier added to your style. Yeah, no worries, dude. <laughs> Thanks, dude. When I master it, I'll let you know. <laughs> Right, we could do with these jade keys. Always good for a run. We've got the boss up next. Mana is well worth buying, but the one thing to note is when you buy mana, damage upgrades, or health, it's nearly... I, in fact, I don't think I've seen it much more than plus 5 to plus 10. I think you can get a plus 15. You can get some huge pluses to your mana, health, and damage percentages through rewards that you get but the ones that you buy from the shop i mean that's not that's not actually that expensive we'll get that and don't need that don't need that more more of these and and yeah see always ever five percent always ever yeah no worries dude well and thank you very much for the nice words, Stain. Appreciate it. I hope work works out well for you. Mine, well, I don't know. I might get our ass kicked by this boss in a minute. Let's see. I don't want to do too many of these. Yeah, so this is reasonably cheap. And plus five to your manners. It's not great. You, want, you kind of don't want to do that. Like, this is way too expensive for that. This is way too expensive for that. And also remember, my currency is my shields. Yeah, nice one, slaying. Cheers, dude. My slaying, uh, my money, my slaying, my money is my shields. The more shields I have, just basically makes it so that I'm invincible. Shields are ridiculously overpowered in this game. And the Gilded Boots perk, which I have here, every 300 grants me one shield. And you can get levels of that which make it so that less gives you more. And it, you have a shit amount of shields, you'll never get damaged in this, even on the higher difficulties. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, let's change that one for that one. Let's then make another one of those. And what else can we get here? Is there any recipes that we're missing? There's still one left. Ah, there you go. Oh, I was right. That one, the exploding tactical grenade was one, which means there's one other. So you don't have to make these to find these. Although if it says undiscovered, that is usually because you've got the level mines at max weapon, uh, mines at max rank, rank 10 for most of the gun firearms in this. <laughs> firearms, not guns. Firearms in this. If it says undiscovered, sometimes they are discovered when you level up. Other times they are discovered when you either make the combination or pick up the thing. So if you want to get them all done, you need to be picking them all up. 
so even though they might not be very good skills because new ones can lead to other better ones what else let's see if we can get what i was after because lightning emperor is what i want i need this one and those two yeah that's going to be too much so it's normally spike normally you just get the lightning emperor one offered to you but you can't just buy them so but again i appreciate the level of this may look like absolute double dutch this look like, might look like flubber derba to von but I appreciate the ability to do all of this because the more and more you play the game, the more and more you can start leaning towards skills that you like and then luck becomes less and less of a factor and it's more about your ability to play. And I do like that in these sort of games. It starts out as luck, but then you can make your own luck. And that's always, again, in my very, very humble opinion, that's a, a sign of a very good roguelike. The fact that I was able to pick this game up from the very beginning, having got some skill within it. Yeah, but look. But you can't can't do this. <laughs> Thanks, Kieran. Can't do that in... Uh... Hello, Jace. How are we doing? You can't go upside down, though. With the boat. And here's another thing that you can't do as well. You can't... You can't do backwards flips whilst firing and kicking. Can you? Hmm? A little air walk for some shots. And then grapple to here. Fling ourselves across. Another little jump to go upside down. And then head standing with the bow. Come on. Can't do this an idea. And then pushing off the ground to complete the handspring whilst firing. If only we could do all of these things in IDU, right? But the again, I, it's something that I'm only just starting to work with. The fact that you can grab yourself to that and then push into the ground and actually push yourself away. It's so good. It's so cool, because it looks like you're doing handsprings all of a sudden. And then you're firing the bow whilst doing that as well. It just exudes cool. You don't get any extra style. That's when I'm showing off. You don't get any extra style for any of that shit. Again, I could do the vault version of this boss. Sin uh, deceit, rather. But I'll just stick to the normal one, because then I won't... Well, it just takes a lot longer to do this one. Whereas this one, we can get past it and onto the next levels. Um, Tempest for this guy, I think. You can kill this guy just by whittling his shields down by shooting them. However, chucking things into him will take his, uh, his shields down, if he stands still long enough, will take his shield down instantly. And then we can do that upside down thing. And then to get decent style on this one, we want to shoot him a load to maybe within an inch of his life and then start killing his minions. More minions. And remember, it's the kills that keep the, the executioner bonus going. At this point now, this would be a good time as long as he throws out some more enemies, which he is not. So just shooting him or getting that times multiplied. The bosses, I think, work a little bit differently. But it's those guys we need to kill. Keep Executioner going. Any more enemies? Oh, there's one. Combo ended. Fuck you to see. It's the one thing that I do like is 
a lot of the, the, the weaponry, the armaments, the enemies, and the special effects have always looked quite good in this game, I think. As I said, it's just the background. And it's like, the one, I was thinking about it earlier, the one thing for me that they really need to improve the graphics of, and then I'd never know any different, is the floor. Because I spend a lot of my time upside down looking at the floor. So, but they definitely made the, um, the sky boxes in a lot of the levels a lot better. I mean, that tree doesn't look too bad, but there you go. Time to upgrade and rest. More than enough. Again, we only needed the 50,000, so that was way more than we needed. But again, this is part of the reason why Tempests are really good. Don't even need to level them up. Uh, cash for power. No, we don't want to increase our damage, although that would increase our damage substantially. I'll have more shields, though. What's our shields at now? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it does go down between... So, one of the things you do have to be careful of is starting killing a boss and then starting the next act. Hey, right. Uh, hey, I'll never let them forgive... I'll never forgive them if they get the flaws wrong, Travis. You're not wrong. So, one of the things, if you are relying on currency... Hello, Mel. Oh, uh, just lots of upside down. One of the things that you have to be aware of if you are using money for anything in this game is it will get taken off of you between acts. It's converted into souls, but it's still being taken away from you, which then reduces the amount of shields that you've got. I think this is a mechanic designed to stop you taking the piss out of these specific traits, but you can still do it anyway. Again, we have got level ups and we now have a horde of souls, so we want to rest at the hall, we want to go and have a look at those items, and we want to upgrade them, because every time we're leaving something in a position where it can be leveled up Probably and not leveling it up... Can be anywhere. Excuse me. Here. Hopefully. It's losing... We're, we're basically losing out on progress. So, for instance, our staff needs to be ranked up. Reduce mana cost by 20%, increase durability by 2. Why not? Lovely. Yeah, standard. Standard silver tongue stream. Increase knockback by 30%. And I'm also increasing these unlocks certain things as well. I think that one's now maxed out. Increased damage by 50%. And also, as you level them up. So, say, for instance, unarmed was my favourite way or a way I wanted to do a run. You can now, once you have got them to certain levels, you can start locking in traits. I don't know why it puts the forged traits up, because forged traits will not be brought into a run. It does specifically say that. But it still allows you to equip them, which I don't get. Whereas, these ones can be. So then, if you've got a specific way of playing a weapon on a run, you can get the trait slots in for that. So, for instance, say I wanted to play a build where all of my punches are adding shields to me. I can equip that three times. Well, that's not how those dolls work now, is it, Indy? can tell who used to pull the string too hard on his pulling toys and other associated things. Don't pull too hard, Indy. It can ruin your health. That's alright. I'll do a silent stream at some point in the future. Maybe I'll do it when it's one of your streams, Indy, and you want me to cover. <laughs> I'll just be quiet. Don't think I can't be. Right. There, the thing sweeper. is, as I have said previously as well, like, normally within my streams, yes, it's actually, the one thing I would say, Travis, is I've played the game a lot, but, I, and I've learned quite a bit about, you know, various things and how they can help you level up and upgrade and do those bits and pieces. And... Because I've learned, bear in mind that I started this game brand new from 
having played the Pico version a lot, I had to start this game with no progress whatsoever. I think I've done seven runs and I'm like I've almost got all of the weapons ranked up to maximum in seven runs now that might that's you might think like oh hang on a second maybe that's too quick no it's because I'm incredibly efficient with what I'm doing and I know what I'm doing survive 90 minutes right we'll have more of these ah uh, no no one behaves not in these streams no chance nor would I wish them to. So we have a map modifier on at the moment where the floor is lava. I hate the floor is lava. But I do spend a lot of time in the air anyway, so it doesn't really make too much odds. Let's get some of these in play. And then let's get the Tempests out. And then we'll wait until we've got a decent amount of mana up. And then we begin! Kapoa! Shall I begin? a certain amount of time. Survive? Fuck off. I'm going to thrive. Keep that combo going. Oh, arrows don't penetrate the shield. Now that's not very juny, is it? Hello, Tom. <laughs> no, fresh out. Fresh out, not too high. Oh. Out of flips. That bow is very mana intensive. between the legs. Oh no, it is doing the shield. It's not very well. Ah, uh, let's stick to gunplay, shall we? And again, the fact that you can f change and flip all of this on the fly, so like in the same combo, I can go from guns to bow, possibly to magic. Back to bow again. Oh, out of, out of mana. And I don't have to, at this point as well, I've got so much in the ways of style. I don't have to do any of this anymore. I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. I do love as well, especially when you've got a lot of shields in this game, how enemy hits send you absolutely flying whilst you're doing your tumbling. It's very cool. Uh, backflip. You said backflip? Yeah, backflip. Turn into a full SD. Usually not a great idea to aim at two separate targets, because then you end up killing neither of them very fast. But if you've got particularly powerful weaponry, you can get away with it. Remember, if your magic stops working. Check that blue ball on your end. A beautiful ballerina of death, as it were. And the thing is, as well, it's all in... It's part of the reason why I flip, is because it automatically puts the game into slow time for you, and it doesn't take away from your mana 
whilst you are doing it. So I live in this game upside down because it pays me to do that very thing. You don't have to. I said you can run around shooting things and chopping things and magicking things. You then end up with silly style points like this. Three quarters of a million. I only need 50,000. Makes me feel good though. Right. No. 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 Yes. Let's see if we can get that lightning out for a while. No. More five finger discount. Lovely. The other thing that I will say about this one is they're still adding stuff to it, even though it didn't it had the game. I don't know why this game hasn't done that well. I think it's because of the problems that it had on launch, and it's why these days devs need to be very aware of that they launch a good product at the start, because this is a good product, but I believe it had problems at the beginning mainly on the PCVR side of things, and so became, well, I Remember definitely call this a sleeper here. Demons near the sacrifice altar for the kills to count. The one problem that it may have, that may have been part of that, Ooh, missed, may have been part of that problem, is the co-op didn't start off particularly great. You could only play the first chapter through, and it was very difficult to get online with people. They've now improved and experimented and added to all of that. Now you can play the full game cooperative. I would imagine you can play the endless mode within this as well cooperative, but then that might be a bit of an ask for me because I doubt we'll be able to save that in the multi. Who knows? Supposed to be defeated. He was a being air juggled there. Devil May Cry style, by the way. All the enemies are supposed to be defeated in specific ways. But when you're very, like for instance, I'm supposed to concussive blast that guy's shield off of him or throw something onto it. The boards. Now let's actually can now that we've got enough style points. Kick for you there. No worries, mate. The one thing that I will say is the whole going upside down is a bit, if you can't tell, it's a big part of the enjoyment that I get from this. And. That is actually a, not a hidden setting, but it is something that you have to turn on. I only really knew about it because I found it in Sorrento and thought it would be ridiculous if they didn't add it. And you wouldn't know just through looking at it. Hey, put that there, blast, grab, shoot.
Difficult to control, you stupid statue. He always tells me off about reloading my guns as well, because I do it a lot. You can turn all of that advice off as well, but... And I've always wanted to, but I did it once, and then I kind of missed the guy telling me off all the time. So I put it back on again. It was like... It was almost like... It was like having chat. <laughs> In the privacy of my own home. <laughs> he even told me to shut up once. <laughs> Right, no, 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 yes. More staff stuff. Uh, these are all rubbish. And yeah, the what you'll possibly find with this game, if you do get it and you do like it, is you'll find one weapon that you can fixate on and then... That will, that will open up lots and lots more possibilities for you to help you unlock. There are a lot of games out there where you have to be good with the thing or have to play with the thing to get it better. Uh, Call of Duty is a good example of that. Like, you know, to get all the attachments for such and such a gun, you need to get so many kills and get so many headshots and blah, blah, blah with that gun. Whereas if you are particularly good with another gun, you can't use that to upgrade the one that you want to try out. This game doesn't have that problem. If you're good with staffs, you can pretty much unlock everything in the game with staffs. If you're not good with staffs, well then you can just make two. Ooh, I haven't tried that yet. So what does that do? Laser beam takes up a lot of mana though so that's obviously very powerful and then <laughs> I haven't seen that before that's fucking awesome look at that I can join in with the shredding and then it's the last one uh, no, it's just the two so what do we get if we do that okay, it's standard yeah. oh no we have seen this one Let's see if we can get ice and blood. Yep. Ooh. Icicle domino face thing. Nice. And then just normal icicle ones. Eh, that one's not so impressive. Let's see if we can fire them. Steady. No. No. There we go. And then... There we go. And then... Laser beam, yeah. Flamethrower, yeah. Awesome. I wonder if they home. No, well, we've got the lightning one, and I can always change the other one to it if needs be. Right, kill things within there. Destroy Let's see what this village does. Within the radius of the sacrifice oh, is this the homing one, actually? Get up! Get up! Oh, it is homing. Oh, it's very mana intensive though. So yeah, that's obviously incredibly powerful because it's homing and busts caps up. Those are the guys that I was talking about with the shells that just drop money. Well, they're not that homing. They are bloody powerful. Though. Look at that body bursts. So that won't be dismemberment kills, so we're not actually getting extra gold from that. Some of the combos are so good. So good. That's still one of my favourites. Very manner intensive. You 
cannot stay in this for very long because it just drains your mana, although it's one of the most powerful AoEs that you can get within the game. You are better off immediately flipping your palms up and firing because these just, just wreck. They also go through shields like butter and various armor as well and just absolutely evaporate that. And these aren't even at full power either. We've got no additional damage on them. That's so good. Go, my pretties, kill, kill. <laughs> uh, touch of mania. Let's hope I'm bringing back to the dance. This might have been, I think this is more to do with people not, I, I saw basically one guy on Steam say, I put, well, I, I've put time into this game and some of the mechanics aren't very precise. It's like, yeah, you've played it for an hour, dude. Come on. Or he played it for an hour before he refunded it. So yeah, you know, these reloading motions can be a little bit difficult to get. Excuse me. Can be a little bit difficult when you first start playing the game. So can kicking. So can any game, but this is definitely one of those ones where you put the time into it and you can achieve what looks like a level of mastery. Quite easily. Well, no, not quite easily, but you didn't need to put the time in. Oh, try. He was out combo. You need to die inside of here. What's that? More minions. As I said, I've got these so that they are out for about half the time that they can be. Uh, I've had, in the Quest 2 version, I'd counted 13 of them. I believe you can get more than that, it's just based on time now. So again, what they've accomplished within this game is, uh, you know, the amount of things that, you know, 13 of those, plus the enemies that are on screen. I think there's like a good six or seven. Uh, probably even more than that at a time. More often than not. Just... More than enough gold keys now, so we don't really have to buy any more jades. Get rid of that event horizon, I'm not using that. Chain lightning and don't know what that one is. Let's get five finger discount. And let's get that, because that makes us more lightning y. What's the next move? Hell sweet. Two, three, four, five, six. See that they're not even that good for style, but you don't need that much style to get the maximum. We do want more of that though. To be paid for the, oh no no red valentine that's the one so if we get a red valentine when you get two of those you are offered forbidden knowledge deeper understanding of the evil host allows it to linger 40 percent longer you can get that up to 200 percent if you can get it to maximum and then that basically means that they come on and stay until the end of the round usually um we're not doing anything with this at the moment so we want to be grabbing xp auto reload when the gun is empty brilliant and then you can also the shotgun is a pump action shotgun but you can get an upgrade that makes it a lever action shotgun which just makes it even easier to use uh this is what i'm saying about some of the weapons in this game are actually quite difficult to use but you can get them up to such a level where they become easier to use and so you don't have to struggle with the hard to use weaponry to get it to a stage where it becomes more handleable. Very good system.
Indy the Angel pulled the other one. Mmm. Cheers, Farm. I think I really might have to invest in the old Quest 3 fucking batteries and thingy bobby. Again, killing all of these so that they don't do me over. Make a habit of doing that. Oh, it's survival. Blood burst, I'd say. And he's gonna last 40% longer. And again, remember, whilst they're out there getting his kills, they're making his money. What an absolute fucking mess. So, if, like me, one of the things that you love is necromancers within games, you're really gonna like people hosts. They kinda like necromancy sort of things in that they go out and just go and do your bidding and they're cheap and expendable and uh, make a good show of things. And this, can, uh, this only gets more powerful and worse the longer you go. And you'll see that they're off just, you know, living their best lives. Slicing people up. Here's the cool thing. Whilst my voice is doing the work, you can get things embedded in your hand, and it actually reduces your maximum health. You actually have to pull them out. So that's something, again, that's something that I kind of associate more with the higher level of play when you play on the higher difficulties. Enemies' projectiles are fired more often and faster, which means that you are likely to catch them in the hand. So, but as I said, we're, we're at the point now where we're, we're quite powerful. Some of the models as well, or some of the it's things, all of the models can be like there. decapitated, lose arms, lose legs, can be sliced in half, can be cut across the midsection. You know, there's a lot going on in this game that I haven't even shown you yet, and it's just because it's not within my remit of play at the moment. But like, for instance, when I have the swords, the axes, the mace becomes like a whip mace within this, which is very cool. You can use that to move and move around the level as well. That's something that I have to unlock at some point. And as I started touching on earlier as well, they're even doing more to this game. They're adding more and more and more. Beware what you wish. Yeah, loads more than what we actually need for that day, so. But the, what you were saying about uh, progression, Travis, that is an important part of it. You want to make sure that you are getting the maximum number of coin and souls per level by making sure you're getting a high number of style. You want to be aiming minimum for the 50, 000, well, 45 to 50,000 style, which when if you're using something like the Tempest, is very easy to do. Um... Totem. Let's get some more going on the staff. Uh, spiteful here. Any chests for me? There's about, I would say about, I think there's 18 different arenas with various levels of nastiness going on within them all. Hanging bodies up there, floating ones up here, some kind of roots and whatever this is. So, yeah. And as I said, although the graphics for the backgrounds aren't particularly great, they've still managed to build a world here that feels awesome and, and nasty. You know, you feel like you're fighting through the depths of purgatory and hell. More so than that fucking floor in Purgatory on IDU, anyway. Right, couple of levels and we'll have completed the run. Right, let's get this over. What else have we got that we haven't really played with? Played with the bow a decent amount. Played with blood. It is lightning. So, provi mana providing lightning is very good. You're able to live out your Thunder God dreams by slashing them together and just moving around the level, electrocuting everything as you see fit. This isn't, we're actually maintaining our mana here as well. 
there, so literally just float around, casting bolts of lightning. But where this really comes into its own, no, no, it's not maintaining mana, it is slowly going down. Where this really comes into its own is when you combine them and then do the old Emperor routine. Now, one of the things that I have found, this is particularly bad because you have to stand still whilst you're doing this. But if you try and demonstrate a second, I found that you can kind of glitch it a little bit. Ooh, nasty. Ooh, two of them. Note how that kick that affected the maximum amount of health that I could regen to as well. So that is something that you have to watch. So if you lightning, and when you land at doing the Emperor lightning routine, what did that turn on? When you land, you stand stop still. If you press the jump button, you then unlock the ability to move. So we can now unlimited power it whilst we move. You can also combine that with a flip as well, which I will try and demonstrate now. Lightning unlock. Because Emperor Palpatine would do this, wouldn't he? He would go upside down and give it the old unlimited power line because he can. It'll bounce off of his head. And back in with the flip and the lightning. The lightning is actually a very good one as well. Ooh, handspring. The lightning is actually a really good one as well. Early doors. It's one of the first lots of magic that you unlock. And the reason being is because it does a lot of hits and it is weak. And that is good because it gets the style points up. Or it gets the combo up. Which then means that if you can get the finishes, you can get the style points up which is what gets you all of that lovely money and souls for progression. Right, we do not need to kill anything else now. Let's just get these totems finished. What's wrong with your face? a nice touch that you have to pull these out to then heal back up to maximum. It just feels immersive, it feels VR-y, you know. Reminds me of the, um, what's it called? Far Cry 3? Or was it Far Cry 2? No, it might have been Far Cry 2, the one where you could get malaria and shit. And uh, all the healing yourself options or all the healing yourself animations in that were particularly nasty. Like, you know, resetting bones and digging bullets out of your flesh with a knife. Has that kind of feeling, but VR. Got ya, you little shitbag. Fuck off. Bye bye. That's my little help button. That's my little Londoner that's constantly in my ear. Called Indie VR, and this is the, uh, the Beetle. He's also a bit of a Londoner. Forget. More than enough. Oh, actually, no, not. Oh, yeah, 300,000. The limit to style on this game used to be 30,000. But it's now been up, so you need to be more in the 45 to 50,000 region when you are starting a run on with the 666 extra souls within it. Might be the same without, but I haven't done many runs without to know or notice. So here's a nice one as well if you're finding it tough going. This is a new feature. End the current run escaping with all of your collected loot. Which is nice. But we uh, 
we don't need we don't need to escape just yet who reckon we should make Indy get this and come and play upside down with me he'd do really well at this I think upside down sat in his big stupid chair he'd love it absolutely love it ah <laughs> oh dear right more damage for that I think one more level emboss time run completed then we can do some more upgrading and I'll probably call it a night there but if anyone wants to give me a hand after the stream I'll explain look for the exit keep your wits about you will involve at least one person in chat contributing and one person in a game with me but I suppose the person in chat could also do that so. the bow play in this game it's not amazing but it's not bad either there used to be a time when the bow in this was absolutely unusable at least now I can I can hit my shots there is a, a distance I find that there is no auto aim to this game but then in that sort of like short in that medium distance it will aim your shots a little for you but it's not noticeable those are the power-ups that I'm talking about. Why buy 5% of a shop when you can get 45 here? Yeah, no worries, Vaughn. Thanks very much for sticking around. Hopefully I've made you want to have a look at this and play it with the staff now. I think you'll really enjoy the staff. It's really good. Really good. Um, yeah, I'll have to get on, with it, on it with you at some point. That one. And compact magazine. And... Let's get that one as well, because that leads to something. And skip that. Uh, so these are... So like, for instance, have we got ice? So the, the key systems... The key system's pretty simple. The Basically, you kill the... Let's see if I can find one quickly for you, Travis. Because they have changed it. So, killing... I don't think the blue totems give them anymore. This is like a like a bonus world as well, where you can get a lot out of it, but it can also kill you off quite quickly. Kind of like a pit, I guess. The, the difficulty isn't quite spiked here, but... So, these yellow totems drop keys. That used to be a problem with the way the old system used to work. Things used to drop off the level, and you had to try and catch them. Now, they go into your inventory. And the way the keys work... Yeah, no, Kieran. No dose. I'm hoping I might be able to get hold of the devs and be able to do a giveaway for this one because I think I'd love to do a tips in 30 ticks, but they don't get back to me on this one, unfortunately. So, so the way the keys work is, from what I read, every key you put into a slot adds to the multiplier. I think the silvers give a times two and the golds give a times three. So from this chest, we would get two rewards. By putting gold keys in, those would be times three variants. Let's see what happens when we put silver keys in, because it's not like I need anything right now. So we get a time a plus two variant. So there's not a massive difference. There's not a massive downgrade between gold keys and silver keys. But... There is a difference if you're min-maxing, because, you know, it's one more of these each time you're picking the thing up. And it'll also be more, like, for instance, if I'd have done that with gold keys, that probably would have been about 110 souls as opposed to 80. That's just the meta progression, by the way. That's, like, souls in the bank at the end of the run, or when you die. But if you can complete a run, you get a better percentage. And then the jade keys... The jade keys basically do that and put a the equivalent of a gold key stopping you put the equivalent of a gold key in each slot you can only or i've only found the jade keys to buy in the shop but they are well worth it because then you can open everything with golden keys and then look here mastery we get a plus three so that's three new traits for lightning not that we need any new traits because we've already got too many as is Let's chain reaction. 
and a bit more damage and yeah whatever that is and then as i said with weapons i haven't currently got equipped it's still worth upgrading you might find particularly good things like for instance crescent moon the back blade can launch as an axe glaive with the axe the the hand-to-hand -hand combat weapons are not just hand-to-hand -hand combat in this they've got some awesome abilities i just i like the bow i like the guns i like the magic i just barely touch the melee in this game at the moment but again when i've got it all top level i'll do a melee only run or a sword only run or something along those lines so but for these things that I'm not using, you want to go for this one. And then that allows you to raise the level of the thing whilst you're in run with it without using it. Um, I've never put that on. Maybe we should because it might convert into something else. But it kind of messes up. There are some abilities here which will mess up the style that you want to play by. I'll try and give you an example of that in just a second. Uh, let's go for more damage and no I think I need level ups on this so for instance the way that I like to play the staff so I can now be lightning but when this ends it will change me to the other spell now that's good if you've got spells within your staff that have got good variety but let's face it that is so much better and so much cooler and so much easier for style and killing than that those are good they're just not they're just not emperor palpatine lightning are they so ooh, but quite good for in here you can still change it back manually but it's just then one more button press that you have to do anyway we don't need any of this at this point. That guy can actually kill us. He might have the cojones to do so. He fires a lot of those lightning balls out. From the spellcaster variants of Pride. I'm pretty sure we just took a shit ton of damage there and they didn't even get our shields down. I do like those fat guys. They remind me of Nurgle demons from Warhammer. So here, two gold keys. And then that'll give us a plus three to the staff and a plus three to levitation. Uh, let's get XP. Right, now we're maxed out, so now we need to start thinking about our decisions and what we want to replace. More XP and... Yeah, we don't need that Mithril one. Those are all rubbish choices. So, and plus three mastery to this one. Again, we're not really using Levitation. I think I've got it maxed out, but just in case I haven't. Seeing ghosts. Levitate three additional objects. Ooh. And... XP. So what, can we summon... Oh, no, it's still three, but I think... Yeah, look at that. We can now levitate five. Per hand. If I can get five. Hang on. Yeah. Come on. Hey! That's fucking Asmodeus. Eat your heart out. That guy can't even throw boulders. Not like that. <laughs> so you can also, I think there's. You're bouncing them. Your bird. I used to use that. And then, yeah, there you go. Lightning rocks. And then you could infuse that, and then uh, blood rocks, whatever they are. So they probably do life drain or bounce or something along those lines. And as I said, there's different combinations of each of the different magics. And then there's also the magic combinations have their own tech trees and their own level ups as well, which change and do different and nastier shit. Like charge magic is the combination of vault magic and ice magic. 
and uh, I know this is one of Von's favourites because it allows you to fly around healing. Now, normally that's not very good in single player, could be you are healing yourself, whereas on this, you can just fly around in the cooperative and heal your allies. Hello, Liminal. How are we doing? Let's get that one. That will do. Yeah. So we don't really need to min-max this place because we're already ridiculously powerful anyway. Probably don't even need to do those challenges. We'll just see about getting the run. Ah, uh, you know what? I am supposed to be showing off this game, aren't I? So probably should do the challenges. Where get more demons? Oh, someone. game is very much available on Pico. Peter Pico is where I played it originally. As it happens. The one thing that Pico hasn't got is it hasn't benefited from this latest update. I tell you what, there's actually a benefit to have spring and one of the floor. Because that's reset my leaps. Which is cool as fuck. Okay. My kind of archery. Fire lots and lots of bolts in the general direction of things. And if you can be upside down at the same time, well that helps. Not for damage, but for soul. That's about the max that's about the minimum you need to get. For, I think it's 47,500, possibly, or 47,000. No, I, I do have a Pico, but the problem is the Pico has unfortunately now fallen a little bit behind the quest. The Quest 3, I've got to say, is arguably a little bit better just everywhere. Although, having said that, the Quest 3 wasn't as big a leap to me because the Pico 4 is that much better than the Quest 2. So, I would say if you're on a budget, you get the Pico 4. But if you can afford the extra, the Quest 3 is, uh, is a very good bit of kit. But yeah, the I don't I think the quest the Pico version has got all of these extras that I'm playing with, so the staff and the the uh, Tempest SMGs and the various reworks and the various quality of life stuff. But it hasn't had the boosting graphics, but I'll be honest with you, the boosting graphics haven't really mattered to me much. The Pico version probably looks a little bit drabber and a little bit mistier than the Quest 3 version, but not enough for it to affect the gameplay. The gameplay is where this game shines and excels, and as we know on this channel, you do not need good graphics for decent gameplay, but it's always nice to have something that's good to look at, and this game looks good enough in the right places. It's just let down a little bit by some of these textures that it has for the environment. But yeah, a very fun game. Very fun. These blood, uh, blood hosts are particularly nasty in these tight rooms. They thought they trapped me in here. No, 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 fellas. You're trapped in here with me. Unlimited power, they said. Indeed. But yeah, that's about one third of the style that we would need. And you see, we get less rewards and less souls because of it. So again, we could just end our run there. No, nope, don't need that. No, nope, don't need that. Don't need any of this, really. And I've got that as top level. So let's get more staff mastery. Uh, don't even need any of this. Yeah. 
No, well, the thing is... <laughs> oh, that's alright, and uh, that's alright, Indy. I was um I was gonna say I think I've found a way to cure your wanker's whiplash, but we can talk about that off the stream, I think, because you know the solution's a bit graphic, obviously, or at least the thing that I'd need you to stop is a bit graphic, so but you know, we won't talk about those things on stream. But yeah, you might be right, it might be uh <laughs> might be training the old mic. As for the floor on IDU, yeah, those there are those jade keys. They are expensive, but that's because we're very deep into the game and have a lot of cash, and we've done quite a lot of re-rolls on the shop already. But they are very good. Um, I still haven't worked out, because occasionally you get offered gold variants of these. I think that might mean, thinking on, that it's because there's a, you're going to get a rare reward out of them or a, uh, a forgeable or forged reward out of them. I'll have to pay more attention to that because that looks like more bronzy or more like golden tip than they usually are. So, And I've definitely seen ones where they're like gold. So I'll have to pay more attention to that in the future. As for the block floor in IDU, yeah, I don't think I'm the biggest, um, you know, I'm, I'm not the... Uh, the favoured child like Beanie is at Super Bright. Definitely not. They're, um... I don't... I get the impression that they're not a fan of me. So, but having said that, I got some keys out of them recently. I've been waiting for them to drop. Here's one of the things that I said to their uh, little team. Is that I was hoping that they i would get some keys off of them and i even said to them at the time for in death unchained this is i even said to them at the time hopefully you know let me know when you're upcoming with the next update for like fixing up paradise lost and abyss and all the other levels and what other improvements they're going to do and we'll run the giveaway on that day or on that week when it's all about to get new and i can cast my eye on it and and you know give it the praise it deserves and give some keys to the games out and they were like yeah no fine no worries have the keys I've heard nothing since. Absolutely nothing. No, probably I do. But the thing is, Travis, the reason why I speak my mind especially about that and very passionately about it as well is because I love IDU just as much as you lot do. And I want it to go from strength to strength. It crushes me that they've just done nothing with that game. It really does. Right, let's get this run finished. But yeah, you're probably right. I don't like this double boss thing. This is bollocks. Savagery is a hard boss. Not a good idea to use these blood hosts on, but I get the feeling that we'll get away with it. The reason being is because when he gets to Half-Life, he goes into like a bit of a Super Saiyan form and starts doing this instant translocation bullshit, and that can kill you very quickly if you're not stupidly powerful. I still might die here, I don't know yet. The reason why he keeps on teleporting on top of me is because he's continually getting hit and that is the trigger for him to do his Goku style instant translocation. We, again, because we're so stupidly powerful, we don't even need to do the bosses correctly. The way you're supposed to do savagery. Ooh. Hang on. Oh, uh, no, I can only summon so many. That's the problem. Yeah, so if I improve the count of these that I can summon, I can have... I could probably have about six of these. All shooting and reloading in tandem. That'd be quite nice. But I haven't done that yet. But again, I haven't got everything leveled up properly. So... Yeah, with savagery, what you... Oh, and hello... Hello, Beavis. How are we doing? So, what you're supposed to do with Savagery is you're supposed to kill him until he goes, like, angry, Super saiyan -y sort of form. If you then hit him, he, whilst he's in his form, he 
does instant translocation. Is that someone's foot? Yeah, it is. He does instant translocation and can just basically fucking curb stomp you. What you basically do is get him into his super stadium form. He can only hold that power for so long, so you just run away from him. And then he'll go to, like, a flopped out exhausted state. Then you gun him down. Ready to add some new tools to your belt? So, yeah. Again, you when you get to the level of power that I've been playing this at, you can kind you need to you don't need to know how to beat the bosses, but just like Anakin 7, you need to know how to do Anakin 7 or at the very least Anakin 8 properly because Cat 5s aren't going to work anymore and the difficulty of this game is exactly the same way. You need to learn how to do the bosses. That way you can take the piss out of them when it's easy going, but then when you crank up the difficulty, you cannot. These are quite cool. You get these for every cycle that you complete. Little fragments of your character's past to build up your story. Of selflessness. As you underwent the rigors of warrior training, the cries of a distressed child reached your ears. You didn't waste the moment before diving into Russian waters. Despite being pulled deep by the currents, you struggled on until both the child and yourself emerged from the river to safety. Now, a lot of these little bits of backstory and bits and bobs if if it was useful i might collect them and put them all in a big video but that does mean me starting the game again but and i don't think you can listen to them anywhere at least i haven't found any but the one thing that i do like about it i've listened to enough of these fragments on the pico 4 to know that we did something fucking terrible to end up here because that's good i've done a lot of good things in my guy's previous incarnation including being a samurai in the edo era in the edo era of japan which is cool right beavis you totally get it this for me this is one of the finest things in this game because i feel like a necromancer just sending out minions to do my bidding now skeletons and zombies and wraiths and ghouls and ghosts they're all well and good but a spinning ball of death with skulls on the end of its whips that's just mm, yes and i can just send them out and providing i can keep the mana going and they'll just go out and they'll just go out and they'll just have fun and they're also a really optimal way to play the game because every kill that they get if you are tandeming it with the right things on unholy magic these count as dismemberment kills which you can then earn money from which you can't usually do with most enemies in the game so you'll see here now all of our remaining gold some, uh, and souls that we had. The souls, I believe, go on a 150% basis. The gold doesn't, but we still managed to get like 16,050 souls from that. So we've got a little bit of leveling up to do. Again, this is right why you need to keep on top of the leveling up between bosses. You were granted an audience with the true line. Get out. I hate being immortal. Uh, you have a little following blessing, rainbow after rain. So these are new blessings, which again allow you to like push your character in different directions. Hey, dude, how we going? And we need to upgrade this, so we are now one level off of top with this. And again, it, all of these, like, increase damage, increase durability of the staff, which only really counts for when you're blocking. The staff's actually really good for blocking with. It's very durable. And additional traits to be locked in, additional damage, spell... Um, yeah, increased damage and magic spells and decrease their casting costs and things. There are cosmetics for you to buy as well, but I think the cosmetics at the moment are just the colour that comes out of the thing when you're firing it, when you're aiming one of its special skills or abilities. Uh, we need to upgrade the axe to the next level. Increases light leeching, so this, this is what you go for with your vampiric build, if you want it. Again, I don't know what the colours do. I haven't really looked into that enough. I've tried the colours a lot on the different bows, and all I can see might be different on different weapons. But if you have a look there, that line's yellow. Oh, here you go, Travis. This is something cool. Who needs one bow when you can have three? 
Right? And they all fire. And I could do the multiple arrow ability. That could go up to times five. And we can do it all upside down. And they'll all fire at a, in the same in a similar sort of pattern and a similar sort of radius of what I am. So they're, you know, they're not amazing, but they're actually effective. And then worst case scenario, you can use them in hand tank combat as well. And if you so decide, you could do that upside down also. Very cool. But yeah, there's so there's so many ideas and so many little bits and pieces within this game. They've all been implemented really well. And it annoys me that this game isn't more known about. Well, not annoys me, that's a strong word. But it's a shame that this game isn't more known about and more accepted. But then, you know, going upside down is a big part of this game. Not knowing that you can turn that on and then finding out that you know, it takes some practice to be able to go upside down in VR quite a lot. It's uh, very annoying. But yeah, the, the level of versatility on this is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Well, uh, yeah, but you're... Uh, do you annoy me? I don't know. I think you're... I don't think you're not well known enough. And then, yeah, I suppose that does annoy me that you're not more well-known, Indy. There you go. There's a fucking shit's compliment sandwich for you. <laughs> okay, that's maxed out now. Uh, what else we got? Charge magic. Let's get that up one more. And so, and because obviously, Travis, I know you are probably looking at this game and still considering it. So one of the other things that I would like to draw your attention to as well, and even I didn't fucking realise about this, and you missed the start of the stream, I was saying about it earlier. I'm an all-rounder at the moment. I'm an all-rounder at the moment. As I am levelling, that's independent from my actual overall level that's unlocking things. As I level up, we get things. Nothing special, just an average janitor. One additional blessing locked in from the beginning of a locked in run. Additional stats, XP loot, additional blessings, reduced style decay, so it's almost like having an additional timer within your executioner bonus, which is how you're supposed to play this game. When I hit level 30, it's more stat increases. When I get to 35, it's more additional blessings that I can lock in before a run. XP and loot drops to help with leveling up faster increased stats and then more blessings and that's just one of the six classes available so you've got the gunslinger who benefits from reduced style decay to an even higher degree but things like picking up ammunition from slain enemies so you don't have to reload and uh that's basically his main thing but also being quite acrobatic the Acrobat is obviously even more so where you can deal more damage for doing basically what I'm doing. Producing style decay. Hitbox size reduction, so you become smaller. And dealing more damage. This one's pretty standard run of the mill. Increased damage for being upside down, which I don't really want as it happens. But then you've got other things like the Vanguard who is, this is for if you want to push the hand-to-hand -hand combat style with, like, um, dashing and jumping and knockback effects and so on. And then you've got the mage if you really want to pick, push into this. And the other thing as well is, if you put these things on, you get some, like, special effects. So if we see here... An orb will or uh, around you. Up to two orbs can exist. I think these orbs just like occasionally do magic effects. But you can have fucking seven of those orbs rotating around you whilst you're doing all your magic. So you can feel like a proper fucking mage genius. Um, then you've got the tamer. You then get a flying companion with you. You can give him a stroke if you want to as well. There is actually a dog in the game. But the whole point of the... I don't want to spoil too much, but the whole point of the game is that, you know, the, or the, the, the tamer side of things is there is, um, there is 
uh, companions within the game as well, and you can give them a little stroke as well. And it's not like a crap stroke. You can actually press the grip button and, you know, proper get in there. Proper give them a stroke, as well as this stupid thing, whatever the fuck it is. But you get these, you get like the, the tamer side of things allows you to really push into the summons. Summons are actually really powerful because a lot of the time you can just summon them and then they're done. But then, like with this game and its versatility, I can infuse the toy with lightning, which then makes my dog lightning. Or I can infuse the dog with blood, which then multiplies the amount of doggos that I get. So now I've got two little red ones and the big black one as well, as well as that thing flying around in the background. And all of these take leveling. You did ask me about the like leveling up within this game unlocking and leveling up all the weapons happens pretty quickly and getting all the blessings and all the bits and pieces happens pretty quickly unlocking the different levels within these things is a bit slower i'm finding so i'm gonna get all rounder completed and then i'm probably gonna have a look at one of the other uh, one of the different ones but i'll be honest with you i kind of like what's in the all rounder but i do like the idea of giving getting gunsmith up to maximum as well and there's 50 levels in each one of these and i'm barely halfway into one or just over halfway into one so the the unlocking does feel like it's at a really good pace and a really good speed. However, there's a lot to do. Like, I've now got the souls to buy the rifle and the mace. And so now I have absolutely everything in this game unlocked. And just to give you a little showcase the rifle and that's the mace so the mace has the ability to latch onto things and then if i remember rightly you can double tap it thank you oh there you go and then you can make it like a segmented whip chain thing and then of course you can do all of these things upside down this will be if i'm going to do a melee side of things because this has got really long range and it's quite weak this is the one that i'll start off with i would imagine because it's more my style how does that work oh there we go and then i can attach to things and then hand spring off of them just like we found is actually really good with the bow because it recharges the number of jumps I mean, I could, I guess, do this. I could. Uh, where is it? No. Here we go. And then... But, ah, but can the God of War do it all upside down? No, he can't. These were... These, like, whip glavy sort of things were one of my favourite weapons within Sarento. They're really good. And these are just the base level of them. So there'll be all sorts of, like, funky abilities and various bits and pieces that they get. You also get bonuses for doing them two-handed as well. Probably not these abilities. But there's just more and more and more. And then the rifles. Three shot. Uh, the only problem that I used to have with the rifle is you have to do a manual reload. And you haven't really got time to look down the sights with them. The bullets are here. It's fairly easy to reload. I believe you can make this fully automatic as well. But then one of the ways that I found that you can cheat the reload is if you fire it whilst you're hovering them in front of you, like all the other weapons, it reloads them manually for you. So... And then there's like, you know, I'd imagine you can attach bayonets to this and all the other guns because I know that you can with the pistol. You can attach bayonets to them. So even your gun weapons become melee weapons and it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. There's four different kinds of magic. There's all sorts of stuff to combine them with. I suppose levitation and blast count as a kind of magic as well. So does unholy. 
but those are usually just adding to things. And it's these ones don't have a level up system within them yet, but I would imagine they might expand on that. You can even have a fucking broom, and it's actually really powerful. You know, sweeping hell and such. And then these are the combinations of the magic, and that's excluding the blood magic that can combo with them as well. And it's just stuff after stuff after stuff. And then you've got your roguelike mode. You've got your challenge mode as well. This is updated, I think, every... Every week, maybe? Where you'll get a certain loadout, certain stats, certain bits and pieces. And there are two leaderboards. Best score, time trial. Now, I haven't bothered going into any of these yet because I want to make sure everything's maxed out before I start using it because I would imagine that'll make a difference. So, but again, there's not a lot of people playing it, so it'd probably be quite easy to get to the top. I should be able to score that in just one round of, um, one round of sacrifice or maybe even wave. So, but some of the combinations that they've put into this are really well thought out. Is that a negative one? No. So, un with these four missions that you do in a row, I don't think you get to upgrade anything. So, everybody has the same, and you see how well you can do. Allah in Death Unchained. And on that IDU bombshell, I shall end it there. This has been the fantastic Hellsweepers, natively on the Quest 3. I have been Silver Tongue Devil. Good night.